numbers, my friend. I think we're doing pretty good already. So we are live right now, Garrett. Uh, we are going to do our stream right now. And uh, those of you who are chiming in right now, this is going to be a live stream of who I call the three die casketeers are going to do a die cast haul for the month of May. Now, myself and original Big Bry, we were both at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway the past week and a half. You, my friend, Diecast Buffet, were sitting at home watching the race on TV. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was enjoying some home-cooked food as well. And you weren't sitting in, like, 80-degree weather with a bunch of 400,000-plus people at the grandstands. <laughs> I can't say I was. You know, they were calling for a 100% chance of rain at 4 o'clock in the morning. And we were sitting in the parking lot just praying to God it was not going to rain. And... <laughs> Luckily, it held off, but in all my honest opinion, I think the weather forecasters at Indianapolis really need to find a new profession. Oof. Because that was brutal. I mean, the, all, the whole week they had us really kind of up in arms about if the weather's going to hold up or not. But luckily it did because, you know, we saw a great race, you know, and I think for the, this was the first time that I went to a race that I literally saw my boy Pagano win. I mean, I saw him win the 2016 Grand Prix, but he wasn't one of my guys then. You know, Elio was still full-time driving. Right. And since Elio retired from full-time driving, it's been Pagano when he's not on track. And, oh, God, somebody's commenting on my own Facebook shit. Let's close out uh, all this stuff here. Let's close out Facebook and all that crap. There we go. Anyways, so we got a lot of stuff here. That is not a secret. The month of May is when we really go all out with our diecast shopping, including you, my friend. You yes, and sir. a wife. You still here, Garrett? Yeah, I'm still here. I was talking about you. You say you got a lot of stuff. So uh, why don't we start with you? Your month of May was a totally different month of May than what me and Brian experienced. You know, what... Tell us the, to the general public what is coming up for your channel here. What, what diecast did you order? Oh, man. Uh, we ordered a crap load of brand new 2019 Mustangs, Camaros, and Camrys. 28 diecasts are going to be reviewed in two months. I, every day we, or every week, we will be seeing new diecast show in my mailbox. It's going to be fun. Well, I feel bad whoever's to deliver your packages. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got free shipping thanks to a good uh, promo code with Plan B Sales. You know, uh, I like Plan B Sales a lot. You know, they got the IndyCar stuff this year, which is going to be a lifesaver for a lot of people. But mom covered. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> mom covered. Oh, I got all this shit laying around here. Ah, we haven't shown the diecast yet. We're going to do it right now, actually. So. Why don't we start off with you, Garrett? Uh, why don't you go into detail what you have ordered this month in May? Like, what exactly what did you get? All right. So I got, uh, let's see, three, uh, no, two Clint Boyer COTs. I got a Dale Jr. Uh, COT. And I uh, ordered a uh, Keslowski's Miller Light car, two Kevin Harvick Bush Light cars, or Bush and Bush Lights, uh, two Clint Boyer cars. Oh, my God, man. Just so many different ones. And, of course, I'm going to buy every bit of die cast in Way 4. So, just a whole pile. Wave four. Now, that has the DC solar car, right? Oh, yes. And I am just head over heels for that thing. Oh, my God. It's beautiful. You just better hope that nobody who is a freaking scalper buys one of those things. I swear. They did it with the craft and truck. That's like, oh, you can get it for $5 at your Walmart. Or you can go to eBay and pay $30 plus shipping. God almighty. That, that, that's definitely still a thing. Um, it, it's crazy. Jesus, I can't believe that. But uh, yes, yeah, so let's get to the diecast. Oh my God, this is getting exciting. So, anyways, first thing I want to show off, I got another copy of this. You know, I wasn't due to get another copy, but all of my photographs, which all 200 of them got signed. Wow. So, I had nothing for Will on carb day. So I literally bought this sucker, and I got Will to sign on this 500 winner. I got a story for you about the 500 winner. So, okay, so we went over to the Verizon signing over in Plainfield, Indiana, and I met up with my friend Seth Dolby. He gave Will his 500 car. 
Now, you may well know from the broadcast that Will shouted, show me respect, motherfuckers, when he won the damn race. So my friend Seth goes, hey, Will, can you sign it? But above where it says the Indy 500 logo, can you write, show me respect? And he goes, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, yeah, can you do that? He goes, I'll sign it with MF, mate. So he did it. Show me respect, MF, he wrote on the car. Wow. Will Power is like, you meet him off the track, especially meet this guy off the track too, Alexander Rossi. I got his car here. So we met him at a tag hewer signing. They revealed his new watch. And when I went to meet him, I instantly said, you know, Rossi off the track is a lot cooler because, I mean, granted, Rossi is pretty cool on the track. But when he's at the track, it's very focused. He doesn't really like to clown around or anything like that. He's 100% focused on his racing. So me, if you get a chance to meet Rossi off the track, I mean, he's a really damn cool guy. But, yes, I did manage to pick this up. Uh, I actually also, if you are an IndyCar Nation member, you get 15% off your purchase. So literally I paid 8 bucks for these suckers. Good deal. That's not going to work for me this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> And also, I can't get I can't get an hour early because I have my bronze badge. I'm gonna be like a Pocono. I have a little bronze badge. Can I get an hour early? Sorry, you're at the wrong track, asshole. Anyways, um, we'll we'll save the, this one for later. Here's another one that I personally love: Tony Kanaan's car. Granted, I really do think that his career is being ruined driving for Foyt. Because let's face it, AJ Foyt's cars. Suck. Uh, they, they don't put enough money into their program. They really are underperforming for what they're given. And quite frankly, I think Kanan should end his career with a better team. But that's just me, of course. You know, th but this car is really cool. I will say, however, they did get the shade of blue wrong in this car. I hate to be a nitpicky type of guy, but they did get the shade of blue wrong on this car. And because, you know, if you see the blue on top of the driver's cockpit, almost by where the roll hoop is, that's supposed to be a lot darker blue. And you can evidently see it when I post my photos on Instagram. It's supposed to be a lot darker shade of blue. But apparently, Greenlight did not get that message, and the team approval was the white color blue. So we're stuck with the wrong color on there. But that's okay on my part. Here's one that if you don't get this, what are you doing? Four days car. Quite frankly, if I would have gotten paid on carb day, I would have bought the 118 of this sucker. This is, last year, this was probably the best car to not get made. And... This car is just absolute a sex machine. It really is. <laughs> it is, quite frankly, one of my personal favorites. Uh, do you want to know a quick little story about Sebastian Bourdais' number? I think I told you this right before, Garrett. I think so. So anyways, Dale Coyne's numbers were 19 and 34 years ago. In 2009, when um, it wasn't Bourdais that drove the car, I would believe. Who was it? No, it was Justin Wilson who drove the car in 2009. Um, but when Justin Wilson drove the car, Z-Line Designs came on the car, and the number was 19. That was at St. Pete. Then a, week, a couple weeks later, Long Beach, the car number was 18. Well, guess what? Guess who else was Z-Line Designs sponsoring at the time? The one and only Kyle Busch. So they wanted to get it to match. And Dale Coyne has number 18, number 19 ever since then. That's Bourdais' car. Uh, do we get an F in the chat for this car? This is also the wrong color. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> they literally missed a day of track, two days of track activity because the color was wrong on this car. I cannot believe that. And the car that looked like a friggin' mutt made the race over them. But 
You want to know a fun fact as well? You could have gotten this car for five bucks on carb day. It was 40% off. Dang. In fact, you can still get on sale at the Speedway, Mer at Speedway gift shop. If you go on, on the IMS website, you can get it for 40% off. But granted, you have to pay $9 in shipping for a 164. So you have to like order a bulk load of stuff to get that deal. But if you're like at the track, definitely that was a bargain. And I actually like this color orange too. You know, I like this color orange, but McLaren threw a shit fit. And they missed the day for the track activity because of it. And also the die cast is wrong too. I believe the blue should be a little bit further back. Pointed out by Kevin Rollins. Speak another F in the chat, Max Chilton. <laughs> Three, four Carlin cars showed up to the race. Only one made it. But this car is beautiful. And I want to say that Greenlight did a fantastic job with this one. I got to say that they nailed it. Last year was a total disaster. Okay, so you want to start about last year's car? Did I tell you about this one, man? I don't think so. So anyways, Greenlight dropped the ball on last year's car. Last year's car got released early, and it was totally wrong. And I talked to Max Chilton about it, and he goes, yes, yeah, some bloody idiot on the internet designed the car, and Greenlight thought it was ours. Wow. So some moron designed on the internet convinced Greenlight that it was the official <laughs> car, and they made it. <laughs> that's crazy I, that I, I heard it from the man himself that was the truth <laughs> that is crazy also my friend wanted to see the test cars here are the test cars right here this is the 2019 Chevrolet test car speaking of number 19 there's a rumor floating around the paddock that Ferrucci's car is getting made the chrome car Rumor, though. Heard them from his Instagram profile. They're getting model cars made. So I don't know if it's a 118, 164, or both. But Brucci's car supposedly is on the market. When it's coming out, or if it's coming out, or if it's just a team exclusive, I don't know. Nobody knows this answer to this question yet. And, but honestly, if you think Dale Coyne is not going to reject getting a die cast made, you're dead wrong. He'll never reject that. And also, a friend of mine, who I met at the Speedway, my friend Nick Vincent, gave me this die cast. This is an Indiana Pacers promo. One of the best, one of the games that his friend went to handed him this die cast, and he had an extra one, so he just handed me this. And literally, at the Pacers game, they were handing out free Greenlight IndyCar die casts. That is really cool. It's like, if you like IndyCar and if you like basketball, it's like, you almost like, it's like law of mankind you have to be a Pacers fan. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I first went to the 500, they chanted beat the heat when I was going on carb day because they were playing against LeBron James in the Miami Heat that year. Oh, wow. That was a long time ago. Yeah, it really was. And now the Cavaliers are the worst team and what, uh, well, they were one of the, one of the worst teams this year, I think, right? I have no clue. To be honest, I've I've been out of basketball the last year or so. Me too. I I haven't paid no attention to it whatsoever. Here's one that I really liked. Sato's car. And believe me, I think they will be making his 500 car. Because we've heard from Greenlight themselves that if they can find any excuse to make a Sato car, they will. Because this guy is so popular in Japan that they will ship Half the die cast over to Japan and they will sell out. Money talks. Well, you know what? Uh, th th and this car also is really cool. I really like this. You know, it was it was a quite a, it was quite frankly a really nice looking car last year. But in all reality, if the five hundred car comes out, that's beautiful. That's a throwback to an old car uh, car from my Jack. Go back to like mid to mid nineties almost. Which that is really cool. Uh, what is another car we can get out of here? Oh, let's see. This is no particular order, by the way. Oh, one of my personal favorites. And I am so glad he made the damn race this year. 
So we talk about McLaren missing a day's worth, two days worth of track activity. This team got their backup car out within an hour. They were literally prepared for that emergency. And they, well, they made the last row. And Hinchcliffe got his ass roasted at the last row party. Oh, that's a, fu- that's a funny story, the last row party. So if you qualify for the 500 on the last row, you get invited to this little party called the last row party. And at this last row party, a bunch of guests come on stage and they interview the drivers and they roast them. And But I will say this, though. They get a nice check. They hand them three checks for 31st, 32nd, and 33rd. And they hand them checks for 31, 32, and 33 cents. <laughs> I was going to go to last row party, but I was going to the Penske autograph session. And, um, yeah, only 20 people are watching right now, but I always uh, put my live streams up as public videos. So anybody wants to watch at a particular time, they can very well do that. And plus, it's 9 o'clock at night. Some people are probably sleeping right now at this point, which, quite frankly, if I wasn't making a video, I'd be sleeping myself, too, now at this point. I've reached the age now where happy hour is literally a nap. I'm 26 now. I'm old. But this is Hinchcliffe's car. Really nice looking car. I, this is, and also, if you look at this car, this baby's Mac. I don't know if you noticed this. But if you open it up, it is a Mac finished car. That's Hinchcliffe's car right there. We can throw that back there. Here's one of the cooler cars of the month of May. This is the promo car for the Mario Andretti uh, 50th anniversary of his win. Let's see if I can get, let's see if I can get a better lighting here. For the die cast. There we go. That's a little better. I think I see a little better there. And uh, but this is really cool. You know, it's a promo. It's nothing really special. Just something to have for the collection. Quite frankly, I collect uh, each and every one of these cars. You know, I collect them from all of my personal collection. In fact, I got bins sitting underneath here. This bed's elevated. And underneath that, it's like four or five bins full of these things. And and this is this for this really right here. This is off my personal collection. I'm not selling them. I'm not giving them away. I'm not autographing them to sell them on eBay. You know, quite frankly, these things are going to be left in my will when I die. <laughs> <laughs> and I leave my die cast to original Big Rod and his kids. I don't know. I'm not having kids, so there, I, I won't. I won't have to worry about that. Leaving them from, from that. I'll tell you that. Uh, oh, here's a cool one. Felix Rosenquist, the NTT data car. This is very cool looking diecast. And one cool things about this car is that it's got like you know, like the you, you ever see the Kyle Larson first data car or. What car has like those little dots on there, those little lines and everything? You know what I'm talking about, right, Garrett? Oh, the Credit One Bank one? No, 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 no. It's like it was like the first data card that had like all the Oh, how can I describe it? I'm seeing it right now in the Rosenquist car. It looks like a looks like a microchip almost. It looks like a almost looks like a motherboard. Interesting. But it's got that same pattern design as the Kyle Larson one. And quite frankly, I don't know if I saw I think I saw it like NTT data was on Kyle Larson's card at the six hundred, I believe, right? Hmm. Now you mention it. I'm not sure. I thought it was the credit one bank. I thought it was his primary. No, it was on the deck lid. Oh, the deck lid. Hmm. Yes, yeah, somebody mentioned the first data clover card. Yep, that's the one. That's the one. It's got the same pattern on it this on this thing. Which I think first data is also part of NTT data. I think they're all the same company. Don't worry. We still got a lot more to go. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Brian, why don't you come on here? The three die casketeers got to come on here. Go on, here, get on your Skype and click on the damn link. <laughs> <laughs> we need to see all of Brian's shit here. And this is off my friend. I got the die cast for him. Oh, this is such a beautiful car, but he has such a abysmal race. The yellow submarine. 
I am so glad they made this in 164 this year. Got the 118. Now I got the 164 to go with it. Going to, into the month of May, I had so much confidence that Elio was going to win. But we could thank the lovely James Davison for stopping last minute on Pig Road for calling that shot of a win. Nothing <laughs> against James Davison. I like the guy, but come on, dude. You were two pit stalls away and you break all of a sudden right in front of them. <laughs> but Elio hit him and it was avoidable contact and he had to go down pit lane, lost the lap, and that was our race. Well, we'll be back with Avengers next year. But this is a beautiful car. If you see this at your local diecast shops or if you see it on, online, don't pass up on it. This is beautiful. Beautiful Pennzoil livery. It's one, of my, it's one of my personal favorites of the year. My, Well, it was my personal favorite until this certain someone crossed the line first. <laughs> okay, so I always say, the best day of my life hasn't happened yet. And the, the day was going to happen was if Pagano, Elio, or Kanan won, and I was sitting in turn three watching it. When Pagano crossed the line, if you get the chance to watch Joe Donahue's video, I, I told him upload a separate video of just the finish because – Take your headphones off because me and Brian are going to scream our asses off. That's the whole video itself. Because the last three laps, I was I was a nervous wreck. Rossi put on a show for us. My God, it was a it was amazing. It was I amazing to watch. Have it. I thought when, when Rossi passed him on the restart, I said, screw us, we lost the race. And then he passed him again with like three to go. I said, crap, this is the race. Then Pagano gets the best turn three of his life and goes right down the front stretch, tries to make a pass, couldn't do it there. Does it on the back stretch. And we down the back stretch, Brian and I just started crying. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. I mean, that's how I was when Junior won the 500 years ago. I legitimately cried. It was great. I, I was legitimately in tears when Pagano crossed the line because – this was the first time I got to see him win in person as one of my favorites. And I was so happy when we won. I will say this, though. Rossi deserves a 500, a second 500. I agree. He is – him and Scott Dixon deserve another 500. And one of these years he's going to do it. I'll be very happy. But I, I was so glad he did it. It was Pagano's year this year because he drove the best race I've ever seen anybody drive at the speedway and if he didn't win the race i would have been so disappointed <laughs> i could imagine i would be too i've seen elio loss in the second closest finish in history i see him losing the third closest finish in history i would be damn well if i was saw Pagano losing the fourth closest finish in history <laughs> that was one of the closest i think because rossi was right on his tail and Rossi drove like a friggin' madman, dude. That guy get doesn't get enough credit that he deserves because he had the fueling problem, and then our lovely friend Servia did not do him any favors. That was crazy. Why was he blocking him? That's what was mind-boggling me during the broadcast. I couldn't believe it either because you don't get your lap back if you're the first car lap down in the 500. Rossi had every right to pass him. He, was at, he had to get out of his way. And did you see him salute him when he went by him? <laughs> I seen him do something. I don't know if it was a one-finger salute or a fist bump. I don't it know. A, it was a fist, but originally I thought it was a finger, and I was like, that is the typical Andretti salute that you do. <laughs> I was so I, I that that was pleasing to see Rossi point a fist at Oriol Serbia. Although I will say Oriol Serbia is a nice guy. I have a couple funny stories about him, but we'll get to those in the autograph video. The autograph video is going to be a totally different video here, people. Because I got a whole bag full of freaking photos to get that I got signed. And when I say I got a, I got a whole book, it's going to be a book. I mean, I met the whole field minus Erickson. I didn't see Erickson the whole month of May. I have no idea why. 
I didn't meet Erickson and I didn't meet Shilton. I didn't even bother with Alonso. Because Alonso just had a crowd surrounding him at all times. So I didn't even bother with him. But that was but I met 32 to 33 drivers. I just can't get to number 33. That's been the past couple years. I struggled to get to number 33. But I got everybody else. So always that one guy that I never see. And also, this diecast got re-released in 118, but they have a bunch of them in 164. Wickens. Now I did see Wickens at the track doing very well. And he told the press that his goal is to be on the grid next year at the 500. And that is just amazing. I, for a guy who was at Pocono, I saw the crash happen. I didn't think that was, he was going to come back. But I'm hoping he comes back. I'm saving this diecast for when he gets signed in the month of May next year. Let's see. What else do we got here? Speaking of the month of May and the 500, here's the program car. I always get the program car. Program car is always a must for me. When I go to the 500, I got to have a keepsake for it. Uh, Gary, when you go to Texas, you should get the program car. That's a good idea right there. It's a little keepsake. Like, it's it's a little stupid little thing, but it's a keepsake. You know, some people like to get the stuff signed. Some people like to have in their collection. I always like to collect the program cars. The Hunter's running program car goes for a lot of money. I'm glad I got my copy of it. <laughs> I could imagine. That car goes for a lot of money, dude. And oh, oh, good luck getting the Rossi winner, by the way. That's going to cause that, – that, that's going to charge you an arm and a leg for that. Also, got this puppy, Zach Veach's Gamebridge car. Uh, do you want to know why – do you want to know why there's no 118 of this? Sure. There's no 118 of this because Gamebridge did not order enough of them. Gamebridge okay. did not order enough of them, and they are the presenting sponsor of the 500. Oh, gee, we're, we're the presenting sponsor of this little race called the Indianapolis 500. You know, it's not – people not really going to buy much diecasts. Just order a few of them. That's crazy. Yeah, that's going to be a fail. Uh, but that's another story for another day. But one die cast that's going to get extremely rare. This puppy. Wow, this camera got it totally wrong. <laughs> it is day glow red, but on this camera, it is it is dark red. It's got the uh, it's got the old effect of the old TV cameras, like I always give that famous lecture over why day glow is um been done on older cars. But this car is signed by Mario Andretti because when we, and I was in the garage area, NBC was doing an interview with Mario. I don't know if you saw, but I got M on NBC twice apparently. I got really? on NBC because I was getting Spencer Pickett's autograph. I got him to sign a couple photos. And a camera guy came up, and he was showing Spencer signing. I said, oh, okay, this is like a little ad. This could be a nice little promo thing that they're going to do, see how good these drivers are with the fans. I get like 20 messages after I get the autograph saying, you're on TV. Well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> My phone exploded with messages. And when I went to meet Mario Andretti, my friend goes, Rob, your freaking hat stands out like a sore thumb. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's why I bought it. And I got Mario to sign this car. And I got, again, my phone exploded. Saying, oh, you're on TV. Well, yeah, I was on TV. Uh, let's see. One of the coolest cars on the grid. Connor Daly's car. This car came out on the Monday before the 500. And I will say this, though. This is something that's going to probably make you a little jelly, Garrett. Greenlight was early this year with the diecast releases. <laughs> oh, yeah, the two and a three, or almost three months of no diecast. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. The playout's my favorite because I saved enough money to buy these suckers. <laughs> I tried to save money as best as I could. I tried to as well, but uh, 
Yeah, once once I come back from Pocono on Saturday and Sunday, I think we'll be picking up with the um, with the diecast reviews because well, how many cars that got released when I was gone? Oh my goodness, I think it's right now. I think it's like eight or ten right now. There's gonna be a bunch releasing in the next week or so. That's not bad. I thought it'd be a lot more than that. But this Connor Daly car is a beautiful car. It is based off of a fighter jet, just like of last year's. This is gonna be one of those cars. That's going to dry up. So definitely pick up this beauty. And, you know, I, I think I should do reviews on some of these suckers. But all these right here from my personal collection. They're all going. They're all going back there. They're all going back there. Some are going to get command strips. And I'm going to hand them on the walls. Don't know what I want to do yet. I barely just got home and unpacked all this shit. That's what everything about the May is. You come home with so much crap. Speaking of more crap, 500 pace car from 69. Fun fact, uh, Garrett, did you know that the 500 winner comes home with one of these? No kidding. They come home with the pace car. The pace car that Dale Jr. paced is now going to be in Simon Pagino's garage. That is freaking awesome. Uh, Dale Jr., he was having so much fun at the 500. I heard stories like he was just having a good time with Rutledge. Well, it seemed like he was in a very chipper mood. Like I, I think he's enjoying his broadcasting and career right now. Horse racing to the Olympics, now the Indy 500. It's pretty cool. You know, I think I think when Junior and all those guys step out of the comfort zone, I think they do a better job. That's just me because they did a great job with the Rolex. They did a great job at Long Beach, and they did a, they did another great job at the 500. It seems like that when they're out of the comfort zone, they seem to do really well. So I, I think agree. They're trying to learn it. So they, I think they're doing a great job. Like I was critical about them coming on the broadcast, but I thought they did pretty good. But um, let's see. Here's the final – one of the final cars, Honda test car. This is a beauty right here. Uh, like I said, this is another keepsake item. Just me to have in the collection. I collect every single one of these, the puppies. So that's going to be part of the collection. And what is the last one? What did I say best for last? Uh, one that's a shitty qualifier at the track. No uh, no fence there. Graham Rahal. Oof. Graham Rahal, if he were to qualify better on qualifying days, I think he would have shots to win the 500 because he comes to the field every single year. And... He always does a great job on race day, but qualifying day, not so much. Video game fan, 1999. How was the Indy 500 this year? Fantastic. Best 500 I attended by a sleek is Pagano one. <laughs> I will say this, though. It felt like an old school 500. When I was watching the 500, I said, my God, this reminds me so much of like a race from 92, 90, 93, 94. Reminds me of so much of an older 500 because you had, you had the leader pull out of the field, lead a good chunk of the race, have a couple guys follow him, comers and goers, people who screw up and not get an opportunity to make it up because it is the 500. This race is cruel. It doesn't play favorites. You know, this is Indy. It is the best of the best at the Speedway. And there are some people that I think that should race the 500 to prove themselves among the best. I really think a lot of people should come over and increase the car count for qualifying. If, you're, if your name is not Fernando Alonso and McLaren, you have a shot at making the 500. Did, did you guys see the Associated Press article that came out about a McLaren? Did you read that, Garrett? Uh, no, I haven't. That was a great article. It lists everything they did wrong. So much that the week before testing, they didn't. They realized, oh crap, we don't have a steering wheel. <laughs> we did not. We did not have a steering wheel. Wow, you thought you could use your Formula One steering wheel with this? <laughs> That's These crazy. Are the complex machines, my friend. It was oh. just a total failure, in my opinion. It was. Also, uh, that was it for the 164 diecast department. Some home decor also came in. Bought this off the Penske trailer. 
support this puppy on carb day. These are the old wood, these are old tin signs here. You can hang this up on your wall, you name it, everything. I do also believe they have NASCAR signs of this. I do believe they also have that for as well. I know they have powers. I know they have for any card, I have Pagano, Elio, Power, New Garden. But if you look on the NASCAR side, you probably can find some of these things. Because I saw this and I was like, you know, I would like to have this. And also, do you want to know the biggest shock of the video? I shopped at that Penske trailer so much they know me by name. <laughs> yeah. They know me as the big Penske fanatic, Elio and Pagano. Let's see. I'm going to open this sucker up. This is the first time I'm opening this thing. Let's get it open. Beautiful. Love that Pagano sign. I'm going to hang this up. Not only did I get Pagano, but it's pretty mandatory. Then a nice yellow submarine gets hung up. This is pretty cool, don't you think, man? I agree. Something That's about that cool. pencil and just one car on the image, it just, it just looks really nice. It's, it's such a nice-looking design. It really is. So we got that. Uh, what else is around here that I can show? Ah, so on Legends Day... There's this little event that goes on Legends Day in Pagoda Plaza. If you go into the chalet buildings where all the, you know, all the, not where the suites are, but if you go by the Pagoda, you go down the yard of bricks, you just go right straight down all those buildings, that's the chalet buildings. In one of them, they have this thing called the memorabilia show. And my good friend Kendall was selling this helmet. This is a 2011 or maybe not. Oh, maybe even further back. I think this might be a 2006. Yeah, this is a 2006. This is on the barcode here. A 2006 Elio Mini Helmet signed by him. And I know it's a, I know it's a 2006 one because it's got the old Honda logos on there. This is when, um, this was when uh, IndyCar was a spec series. It used to be all Hondas, all Delard, RR5s, complete spec series. So. Penske was a Honda those years, and Elio signed the mini helmet. I bought it for 50 bucks, and this is a great collector's item, if you ask me. I really think so. you collect mini helmets at all, Garrett? No, I do not, unfortunately. Do they even sell mini helmets in NASCAR? I think some of them do, but they're, like, much smaller than this, I think. I think they have some, uh, like, very miniature-style ones. See, I like the miniature ones. I like the half size ones. The half size ones are really nice. I like those. Uh, speaking of helmets, I got to say the best for last. But let's go over to some of the 118s. Had to pick this puppy up. Now, I must say, green light's quality with the 118s has definitely gone up. I mean, there's, it, it, how does it make sense that there's less aero bits on the car? But the car weighs more. That's because there's a lot more metal to these cars now. With the aero kits, a lot of that stuff was plastic. So they ditched a lot of the plastic. They went with all die cast metal besides maybe the air flex. Well, even the air flex, I think, are metal too. Except for the chassis part. The chassis is still plastic. But these cars, I gotta say, the quality of them has just gone up. And also Fun fact, the blue's wrong on this car, too. It is a lighter color, shade of blue. The only person you can thank is uh, Greenlight and uh, AJ Boyd Enterprises. And I also had to pick this sucker up, too. I just had to do it. 50th anniversary of his grandfather's win. And it was all this, this car is in such high demand that when I ordered mine, there was only three left in the Speedway gift shop. They had so many back orders of this that when they were all done, there was only three of them left. Wow. And um, so they, these only had um, three left. I bought one of them. By the, by the end of the day, they were all gone. But I think they slightly restocked card day, if I'm not mistaken. Because if you went to the Mario Andretti store over at the, at the uh, F1 garage gift shops, that's the one cool thing, too. You know, like where the old F1 garages are? Well, now they're the NASCAR garages, but I call them the F1 garages. You go 
inside the actual garage, they open up all these gift shops and all these midway displays. That is so damn cool about the 500. I love going to see those F1 garage gift shops. And you can, could have purchased one right there. But that's that. And bear with me. This die cast is very cool. But for the life of you, don't buy it. Because this guy just happened to win a particular race on Sunday that they're going to make a die cast of. And... I absolutely do not recommend this car. You have to wait until Thanksgiving-ish when the 500 winner comes out. Get the 500 winner because it's going to have the LED scoring panels, going to have the 500 tires, it'll have updated decals and all that crap on there. So the 500 winner version is the one you got to go with. It seems like that... Greenlight really nailed it on the car. They did, granted, they did a fantastic job with this diecast. I bought this car Sunday qualifying, I believe I bought this car. And I bought it. And now we won the 500. I got to recommend to the fans that you really should get the 500 winner. Don't buy the regular version. You won't regret it. The 500 version is going to be fabulous. One thing I hope they do since it's a day glow car, please make a raced version. God almighty, they did it with Sato. They didn't do it with Power. They got to do it with Pagano. And I got to say, if you make a figure version, you got to include Norman Pagano on it. That friggin' dog is adorable. And he was in victory lane with Pagano. Pagano calls his dog Norman his son. He brought him to victory lane. And they all started screaming. The dog started Yapping, and there was a photo of him in mid bark, and it's so adorable. Like I am not a, I'm not a dog person. I am a hundred percent cat person, but I'm a, I'm a Norman Pagano fan. I'm an Oscar Jones person. I'm a, what, are, what is other dog do I like? I, oh, Robert Wickens' dog, that, and also Hinch's dog. They're all adorable. They really are. You follow any of those pet accounts on Instagram, Garrett? Uh, no, not, not, I can't say I can or have. <laughs> I fall Norman Padgett. Norman Padgett is friggin' adorable. I would adopt Norman, but I don't like dogs. <laughs> Oof, dogs are awesome. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're a man's best friend and all that, but in all reality, I like a cat because you can just leave it the, f the hell alone. <laughs> Good point. My, if my person, if I had to have a spirit animal, not only is my spirit animal Squidward, because he really is, if I pick an actual animal and not a stupid cartoon character, I my, my spirit animal will be a cat. Because cats don't want to be bothered. Cats pre perform best when they're by themselves. And just you just give them food, give them water, give them shelter, roof over their head, give them a little few toys. They're shit happy. Simple animals to take care of. What a dog! I got to I got to walk it. I got I got to got to play with it. Oh, the time I barely time to scratch my own butt, let alone play with the <laughs> Oh God! My sister wants a dog, and I said, "If you get a dog, that's your problem. Don't involve me with it." Because I would feel bad if I don't feed it. I would feel bad if I don't walk it. Because it gives you a sad puppy look, and you feel terrible, and. It, I just cannot show love for a pet. I, I I'm not that type of person. But let's let's say the best for last, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> I, I timed that really perfectly. <laughs> now you see, people, we call ourselves the die casketeers. Oh God! <laughs> you know, Brian, I was gonna originally call us the three students, but I included an F bomb in it, so that would be kind of like not really video appropriate. So we call ourselves the three die casketeers now. Sounds pretty appropriate and G rated, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Don't leave me to come up with nicknames for people because it might be it might not be family appropriate, but. One of my personal prized possessions now is this sucker. 
Oh, I know what's coming. <laughs> what's coming, Brian? Come on. Come on. <laughs> right here is a full-sized helmet that is a decal collage of all of Penske's Indy 500 wins. It has got Rick Mears, all four of his wins. It's got Bobby Unser in 81. But Uncle Bobby signed it. Oh, well, you see, Sam, you know, you're just playing wrong. <laughs> Uncle Bobby. Got Elio in 2001, 2002. It's got 2009 on there. Danny Sullivan in 85. I also got Al Sr. on it. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get all the living winners to sign the helmet. Will Power sign the helmet? Uh, <laughs> I was going to get Little Al's autograph. Oh, yeah, but we all know what happened. Literally, the day <laughs> I, I'm going to get his autograph the next day, I wake up to a picture of his mug shot. <laughs> <laughs> that was literally like a day before I left. I was like, <laughs> and I still brought the algae to die, I guess. I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> you know, he got busted in Avon for his third DUI, and I said, Look, come on, I want to get my helmet signed. <laughs> You mean both, brother. <laughs> but now we have a very good problem, Brian, now don't we? We do. The problem we have is we got 18 photos. Pagina won this year. Mm -hmm. So is going to have him sign the visor. I approve that. <laughs> and I said to him on the Thursday when we got his autograph, you know, we hope that we can add an extra photo next year from you winning the 500. Also, Jill DeFerrin signed this, which he was very gracious about that. Considering I got him literally after his car got bumped from the grid. And oh. so my next goal to get this autograph is to get Juan, get Elio, and Pagano at Watkins Glen. They're going to have a mm. full field autograph session at the Insta race. And I'm going to try to get Elio to sign out. Which year should I get him to sign? Is 2001 or is 2009? Well, I'm glad you didn't pick 2002. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I mean, that, I always get to go for the first one. I mean, I know that sounds pretty obvious, but first ones are always oh, yeah. memorable. First one, too. Is this one from 2001? Uh, yes, I believe so, because there's no Marlboro logo on. Yep. 2001. Uh, fine. Hey, well, there you go. I think, I think with Rick, I should get him to sign his 91 picture. That's his fourth. True. I don't know where I can meet Sam Horner Jr. I don't know where, he, where he's racing these days. But if Sam's ever appearing at the 500, I'm going to bring that helmet and get Sam to sign in 2006. Which, by the way, that should have been Marco's race, FYI. I, I'm sure all of us agree on that. I'm still salty about it as well. <laughs> oh, my God. That was – if Marco would have passed his father, which he did, and won the race, that would have gone down in history as one of the greatest passes of the 500 in history. Oh, I would have. And the Andretti curse can, you know, was almost uplifted, but <laughs> it still continues until this day. They also call it the curse of the kiss of Andy Granatelli. Oh, yeah. <laughs> STP. And Andy Granatelli kissed Mario in Victory Lane, and some people say that that was the curse that when it began. And um, somebody asked me who's my favorite IndyCar driver. Well, a full time, it's Pagano. That's why I flipped the shit when he won. When it's 500 month of May, it's Elio. That he's an Indy 500 only driver, but full time for the championship is Pagano. You can thank Brian for that as well. All right, thanks. <laughs> now it's your turn. I think I literally covered everything. That's literally, I think, everything I got this month in May. This is a relatively quiet month in May for me, diecast purchasing. I know. You, you, I mean, usually, heck, it's like you and me both are like, <laughs> we'd be like the first two people at the haulers and even at the stores or even at Gutswear to find the newest diecast. <laughs> so, yeah. And Garrett over here is like, oh, I can't wait for my, my line of 164s to come in. <laughs> <laughs> for real? No. I mean, heck, he's got me beat. I'm still, uh, I was out today looking for those damn 164 trucks. I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I'm losing hope now. <laughs> I, I got the, what is it, the Briscoe one or whatever? It's still at my store right now. <laughs> Meanwhile, Wave 2 and Wave 12 and all sorts of Bring on Wave stuff. 4. I'm already ready. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, no, I'm ready for the Cracker Barrel Wave. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who the? <laughs> Three diecasteers are one of our diecasts. Brian, what what guy what diecast did you get this month in May? Well, sum up short, I got every single 164 diecast from 2019, but I might as well go and show the ones that I got autographed because you know autographs are always cool. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> yes. So we got the man right here, Joseph Newgarden. Uh, camera probably not as a quality as uh, Mister uh, Race Day 2011, but hey. <laughs> can I just say that can I just say that, di that diecast buffets were in the most diecast buffet apparel I've ever seen in my life. A freaking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that 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 is true. <laughs> then you got the yep. famous seal tees on the Can background. You be any more stereotypical for my video? <laughs> It's always an Elliot hat and a Nirvana shirt every time. Oh, it's got to be the Nirvana shirt. Yeah, that's a classic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lordy. Um, and bear with me, folks. Heck, I'm actually glad I didn't put this box away because, as you can tell, no, I didn't got mugged or whatever. <laughs> I, I'm actually in the process of moving. So, I mean, Oof. that's why everything looks very bare and um, I'm slowly starting to go insane. <laughs> so, <laughs> I imagine that's a nightmare having to move all those die cash, dude. It was, yeah. I, I immediately started to cry when I had to take off the, the famous NASCAR Authentics wall because it was oh filled head, head to toe. I was like, <laughs> oh my God. Oh. That's <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> oh, man. But um, anyways, might as well go ahead and show your 500 winner, Pagano. Met him twice. I mean, awesome guy. Uh, <laughs> he knows me and Rob by freaking name now, so you can't go wrong with that. And my God. <laughs> I remember walking up to him. We met him on the Thursday of the Verizon signing, and I said to him, you know, we're such dedicated fans that we got back in your line again, which that was the rules. You're allowed to get back in line. And he goes, yep. well, yeah, nuts. <laughs> yeah, we've been called a handful of names, too. Hell, did you say the same thing? We were at Menards as well. <laughs> we, quote, unquote, followed him. <laughs> you guys follow me everywhere. You guys are nuts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. Man, I gotta love that guy. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, I know Rob's gonna like this one right here. Got the man, uh, TK. Uh, I got him along with um, Scott Dixon and Graham Rahal from the uh, Full Field Autograph Session, which, by the way, that's another reason I, what reason I love in the IndyCar races. You can, you know, you're guaranteed to at least meet most of the drivers. <laughs> you no. Know, so that's pretty damn cool. Our drivers are quite accessible. All of these photos are autographed. <laughs> yeah, once you got like nearly like two hundred like signed. I love again my precious garage credential and handing them my photo. <laughs> this is gonna be a book. Like this is not like a little pamphlet. This is a book. <laughs> oh man, oh man. Um holy crap, this is actually yeah, a lot of stuff. Uh, this one was actually a surprise. I actually ran to him in the garages, but wasn't in the best mood, so I kind of felt bad. But Felix Rosenquist. He was pretty disappointed at the car day. His car was just mm -hmm. not. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a, it's a shame. I mean, heck, uh, he, he he if he didn't you know pull himself together, he he could have been almost out. <laughs> but he luckily he made a comeback during qualifying and found some speed. You know, I was very happy with that die cast that has the LED scoring on in there. On there. Oh yeah, and that also has the um, uh, pretty appropriately that uh, funny. The NC Data car actually has the um, official um, series logo on it, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> they actually got that it, late enough to where they actually had the notification that hey, assholes, you know, they next they get the series name. Yay, we got accurate diecast. Meanwhile, we're still waiting for accurate diecast from Lionel. Mm, gotta love it. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Lionel! Oh, doubt. Uh, we're only gonna update the. We're only gonna update the Fords. <laughs> oh, Chevrolet and Toyota fans, better luck next time. But anyways, yep. yeah, back to the Indy Car Nightcast. <laughs> I'm at, I'm having too much fun now. Um, might as well go and grab a handful. Um, because what the hell? We got the man himself, Elio Castroneves. Which I mean, I don't know if Rob already told you guys or not, but. Twice already, uh, we met, we tried to meet Elio Castroneves. We only met him once, and he was he didn't show up at one <laughs> at the Verizon signing, but he was especially late on the uh, on the other signing on uh, Carb Day. <laughs> oh my God! He, first of all, he tweeted out that he was supposed to be at the Verizon signing. Never, it was no show for that one. I have no idea why he didn't show up. And then on Carb Day, he was like six minutes late. 
Thank God I was at the end of the line when he came because I was like, I, I think I shoved a few people out of the way. I was like, I'm going to sign my photos. <laughs> <laughs> I almost felt that too. I was like, uh, am I getting kicked out for this? I just wanted to see Elio kiss. I, I, um, he literally came as soon as I like skipped over it. I was like, just my luck. Yeah, I got to give him credit. His hair's got to be perfect. <laughs> that hair's got to be like, like I can't believe I'm using a millennial term, on fleek. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> oh God! I, that that I, that's. <laughs> it's with him and Dario. How do you drive 500 miles and your hair still perfect? I mean, that's some strong hair gel. I want to know what the hell he's using. <laughs> Magic. Dario is, was a cool guy. Remember we met Dario at, over at the uh, Kroger, over in um. Mm -hmm. What's an Avon? That's that was where we met Johnny Rutherford. We met Johnny in a Avon. I think we met Dario on northeast side of town, I believe. I'm surprised you remember all these Krogers because I like after we went to the third or fourth one, I just got lost. I was like, okay, I think I've seen more Krogers at Walmart in Indianapolis. <laughs> There's literally this the local radio station did a bunch of signings for all the legends, and they appeared at a bunch of Krogers. So we went to almost we went to like literally all of them, I think, Brian. Just about. I mean, besides Al Jr., but you know. Well, oh, you know, Buddy Rice replaced Al Jr., and I felt so bad for the dude. Nobody showed up that damn thing. Yeah, that was literally, like, guys, this was, like, literally the fastest autograph session I've ever had. Just, we went in, we went out. <laughs> Just like that. We were literally in and out within five minutes. Just about, yeah. Wow. It was, like, that quick. <laughs> Rice, this guy won a 500. Granted, mm -hmm. he won the, the trivia question 500 winners. But he won. He did, yeah. I mean, his name's in the books. He's along with, um, you know, the other buddies. Was <laughs> here won it? Mm -hmm. yeah, he should have been a three-time winner if you really think about it. True, yeah. He's had, you know, I mean, that, that's, I mean, along with him and many others, they could have easily been a three. <laughs> so what else did you get, Brian? Show us, show, show the fans more what you got. Oh yes, well I this might actually be bragging right here, but I was able to get the former 500 winners not once but twice, the 500 car and the 2019 car, which basically about the same car. Um, did Rob, did you tell that one story about uh, one of our particular friends uh, with this car, if it's appropriate? Well, I'll tell it again because it was very early in the video. So we mm -hmm. were at a Verizon store over in Plainfield. And my friend Seth came to the autograph session, and he was going to get Will Power's autograph. Now, we all know that on the race broadcast, after Will Power won the race, he said, show me respect for the fuck. And when Seth went to go meet him, he goes, oh, Will, can you sign with show me respect? And he goes, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So he goes, he goes to look at it, he goes, you know, I'll just write MF Mike, and he writes show me respect MF on the car. <laughs> I couldn't believe he did that. Like after that, I mean, it seems like Will Powers is such a, he's got like such a nicer personality now ever since he won that five hundred. Which to be honest, I thought it was gonna be the opposite and start becoming even more cocky, but hey, I mean, they, if this is how Will Powers gonna be like, I'm I approve it. <laughs> Same thing with uh, Rossi when we met him off the track. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that was interesting, yeah. Oh, also, and there's a couple other things I got to show. Ah! A couple reach nice signs the, here. Uh, reach for the Boy, skies, Newton. <laughs> and I went to the... I was invited over to the IMS Museum for a bunch of Legends autograph sessions. And inside that Legends autograph session, there were some people that I did not have anything for. You know, what I did was I got that sign and this sucker. And the sign is signed by Ari Leindyke, Louis Meyer, Jim McGee, Bill Simpson, Johnny Rutherford. Johnny Rutherford, him and Richard Petty have the best penmanship in racing. They're I know, for real. <laughs> are professional. Mm -hmm. I mean, Johnny's is so well written. I mean, I that, that's, that's just perfect, man. Hell. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I, mm -hmm. Joe Farron, and also Bob Jenkins. Anybody remember Bob Jenkins from ESPN? I love yeah, Bob buddy. Jenkins. <laughs> he was inducted into the IMS Hall of Fame this year. 
And part of the reason why is because not only did he not only did he do NASCAR work, he was part of the IMS radio crew from the mid 80s to the late 90s. And he also called a few 500s himself. And he's still part of the public address crew. And he was inducted this year and I met him. And what do you think I said? I said, you know, you and Benny Parsons were my childhood. And he goes, <laughs> you know, me so much. And can we all just agree that you cannot get a commentating crew ever again like Bob Jenkins and Benny Parsons? I mean, I will give them that, yeah. <laughs> they, they, they had, you know, that chemistry, man. And that's something that we could probably never see again from those two. I don't it's think a shame. I don't think we'll ever see anybody like that ever again. And that that's... That's something I got to cherish now because Dave Calabro and Bob Jenkins are getting up there in age and it's definitely, they're definitely not getting any younger and it's definitely not a world I'm looking forward to when they all pass away. Oh, and real. that's when I said, I said when I met Bobby Unser, when I met a, when I met uh, Mario, when I met uh, Johnny Rutherford, I said, you know, this is pretty soon. They're all going to pass away. Well, they will. I mean, that's why, you know, that, that, that was cool that we were able to meet majority of the legends. <laughs> I mean, it was just amazing, man. Well, shall it's we okay. Come to one stone and show of all, all of our autographs? Come again? What? <laughs> I think we should kill two birds with one stone and show, all, show us all of our autographs. Hey, what the hell? Sure. <laughs> I mean, uh, first, Brian, show you all your autographs that you got this month in May. Hey, what the hell? Well, this one is probably the highlight of my uh, autograph for this uh, year. Finally, I I met uh, before I met two of the three um, four time winners. The only one I was missing was Al Senior. Well, I can finally say I finally met him in person, and even better, I got these both these two diecasts right here. Two of his three, uh, two of his four wins, and it's just absolutely amazing, man. <laughs> what John Lennon came up with was they um, they. Garrett, I don't think you've seen this before, but Johnny Lightning came up with the 500 winner diecast along with the pace car. That was yep. a back in the 90s when they did that. That's freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. I, oh, there's you know, a, a couple of Daytona 500 pace cars. We do what? He also, Greenlight produced a couple of Daytona 500 pace cars. No kidding. I did not know that. They did in 2007, 2005, and 06, I think. They didn't do that again because that would be really cool to go in my collection. I really think they just should get a limited license to NASCAR I guess. You know, because I mean don't I mean they only got 20 employees, so they can't really make every single one. If they're gonna get a license, they should just make the big name drivers and that's it. But Good I wouldn't point. I wouldn't mind paying nine or ten dollars for something that's a this kind of quality, you know. With my indie carnation discount, I pay eight dollars for these things. Imagine can't, going, can't go wrong with these bad boys. Imagine yeah. me going on Saturday, be like, "Oh, I got an indie carnation discount." You're the one support, you moron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I keep forgetting about that. I was like, "Heck, I even got offers uh, from you know Kevin and Noah and say he want to use it." I'm like, I keep forgetting about that because I just get so overwhelmed with all the diecasts. I mean, heck, I was even over overwhelmed. Uh, Guys, I, I literally did my diecast shopping as soon as I walked out, as soon as I got to the airport, because there was like a little section right there where they had uh, for IMS. I was like, I, and immediately I saw the daily car, the Alonso car, Chilton, even the Sato car. I mean, uh, I actually got that before Rob, fun fact. <laughs> yeah, he goes, he shows up at the airport and he shows up with a freaking Sato car. I said, where did you get this? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, I mean, beautiful. this Sato car. <laughs> he goes, we well, already go to the airport. And I'm like, well, this is where we're gonna hit the gift shop now, and I'm gonna get my own. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it the Monday. I saw the daily. I saw the what other car was on the Monday? Rosenquist. No, it was uh, yeah, shit. Maybe it was the Rosenquist. You're right. Maybe it was that car. Yeah, you're right. It was that car. Yay. <laughs> I mean, I that was one of the late releases. Sato, and then Brian just shows up with a freaking Sato car. I'm like, you ass. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, before I even said hello to him, I'm like, there's a Sato car in there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, long time no see. Uh, is that the Sato car? I couldn't believe you found that. But anyways, shall we get into the photos for the month of May? Oh, yes. 
This was from the Saturday qualifying. This is a shot of Graham Ray Hall. I got signed. The Ray Hall crew was one of the first people out. The Saturday really wasn't a day for me to get autographs. Saturday was really just a day for me to go take photos, go up in the stands, mm -hmm. take some nice images. But here's Ray Hall. Here's another Ray Hall autograph. Takuma Sato. Takuma Sato, I must say, he is just very gracious signing. He is a very popular guy amongst the fans. Like he, he can draw a crowd. He is, yeah. I like the diversity he brings to uh, the sport. I mean, it's always cool to see that. Here's Jack Harvey's card. Jack Harvey signed that photo. Uh, Marco signed this photo. I actually got Marco the first day I was at the track. That's a shocker because Marco's usually hiding. Yeah, talk about that autograph, man. <laughs> Marco and Jenny's autograph. <laughs> and you got Jack Harvey again. This was him in the garage area last year. All mm. these photos are mine. None of these are professional taken. These are all mine. There's Tony Kanan. I actually got Kanan right after qualifying. And, uh, oh, I wonder whose autograph that is. Hmm, I wonder who. I wonder. Carol, <laughs> oh, Brian, are you? Maybe. <laughs> totally, being, uh, totally being not biased. <laughs> and here's Elio's autograph. Kind of a rushed autograph because I got him in the garage area, but nevertheless, he signed it. This is Ben Hanley's autograph. Ben Hanley's Dragon signed Speed. I love Very it. Nice guy. This, all, this is from Sebring. This is the LMP1 images I took. Uh, so that was Saturday. Saturday really was not the big day for autographs. Saturday was more of a day for me to photograph. Sunday, however, here's where we get to the good stuff. Got Colton Herta. This is him on his Rolex winner. This was taken at the Roar. You can tell this was the Roar because there wasn't a hundred year flood in that picture. I know. I was about to say it's it's flooded now, <laughs> or was. If it was a puddle of water with that, you could tell it's the twenty fourth. But it's bright and sunny, so that was the Roar. Oh yeah. And here is Sebastian Bourdais. Uh, fun fact about Bourdais: this has a number nineteen on it. That's because Sebastian signs with the year he signed the photo. Sorry, saw whatever he signs. So next year, there'll be a 20. The following year, will be a 21. Then a 22, et cetera. I think um, Carlos Munoz does that too, I think, yeah. I think you might be right. I think he might have done that as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. Here's Kyle Kaiser's photo. That's his DPI signed. Again, Kyle racing. Kaiser. I usually don't hand them more than two at a time because, you know, to me, I think, you know, they're busy in the garage area. If they sign just one, I'm happy with it. You know, yeah. some people like, I mean, this really isn't common in any car garage area, but I've heard some stories where people get fit, hit or hissy fits if they don't sign two. Just be grateful to get them to sign the one. For real, you yeah. Know, or, like, or even be grateful to have the opportunity to actually meet the person or have a conversation with them. I mean, I'm always grateful for that. <laughs> but, you know, people will be people, I guess. This is Brian Hurd's autograph on Marco's car. Because Mark, because he is the car owner from Marco. Here's Brian Hurd again. Here's Jack Harvey. Got him again. Zach Beach from Pocono. Here's more of Zach Beach. And here is Hinchcliffe. This is taken on the qualifying day. And here's, oh, here's a couple more Marcos. Marcos autograph again. Got Marco. Ryan Hunter Ray. Where was that? Where, where, where did I leave off here? So I don't want to mess it up here. Also, uh, funny story about Mr. Hunter Ray when I met him. So <laughs> I got his autograph on the Sunday. I go into Dawkins on Main Street on, in the town Speedway. Oh, now, God. <laughs> Mr. Newman has a confession to make. Mr. Newman is not too fond of little children. When I see a child in a restaurant screaming or at the Walmart fooling around, I cringe 
My face turns red. I say curse words under my breath. They are real friggin' demons. And so, he begins. When, Ray, when these three kids showed up at the Dawson's on Main Street, they were screaming bloody murder. They were bad. They were misbehaving. And I wanted to say to the mother, control your damn apes. I mean, oh, sorry, I mean kids. <laughs> oh, God. My, I was this close to, to saying something. But as soon as they said that, the lady goes, the party for Hunter Ray will be ready in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I almost cursed out Becky Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the oh, way, is going to be your sister. <laughs> I almost told Becky Gordon to control her damn kids. <laughs> Boy, that would have been awkward. <laughs> My God, the little one was so bad. Ryan, well, Ryan wasn't bad, but the other one was screaming bloody murder. It was annoying. <laughs> you, if, uh, if I ever get stuck in a room full of kids... I am going to find the nearest window and jump out of it. <laughs> and that's the last we hear from you. <laughs> anyway, Colton Herta and George Steinbrenner signed this photo. I, I asked George Steinbrenner to sign it. I was like, I don't have any photos of the of the 88 car yet. Just sign Colton, Colton Herta's Rolex car. I got a big laugh out of that. I was like, yeah, I'll come back next week with more. <laughs> Here's Sato again. There's Sato. Here's James Davison. James Davison. James has, James has a nice autograph. It really is all over the place, but it's also nice at the same time. Yeah, it's got like a curvature well, to it. These are all last year's autographs, by the way. These are all taken last year at Speedway. Pato Award. What a big F in the chat for Pato. Pato Mr. Race. Bro. Although, granted, Pato actually bumped Alonzo. In a road course car. <laughs> Literally, Gary's sitting there like I'm crazy. It was a road course backup car, and he bumped Alonso. That's the summary of McLaren in a nutshell this year. Just what a mess. <laughs> it was a disaster. Mm -hmm. Tagino again from Sebring. Tagino again. Can't go wrong with that. Here is the autograph that got me on TV. Hey! <laughs> this was the photo that got signed while I was being broadcast on live TV. <laughs> and here's the other one. I got two of them signed. Got managed to get Will Power in the garage area. Ben Hanley, he qualified that day, so he was very happy to sign. Very gracious. Here's Pat Award again, Kyle Kaiser, Jack Harvey, and I also met Johnny Rutherford there. Like I said, Johnny Rutherford, some of the best penmanship in racing, let me tell you. He does, unlike the Andretti's. <laughs> and this one, T-Bell signed it, Townsend, signed the Lexus. T-Bell, I like that. <laughs> Mario signed that. Charlie Kimball, Ryan Hunter Ray again. Thank, I, I, I just thank God for the strength that I have for the five seconds I didn't curse out Becky Gordon. <laughs> yeah, that would you you would be public enemy number one for our HR. <laughs> I thank be bad. God because Ryan Hunter Ray would call me and be like, "You you almost you cursed out my wife. Yeah, you, <laughs> it's horrible." <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. Here's uh, Charlie Kimball again. Joseph Newgarden. I like Joseph's autograph. He's got a JN on it. Here's Joseph again. Uh, let's see. Elio signed that. Uh, let's see. There's Ari Leindyke. Ari's got you know a nice signature himself, too. Mm. Right? When we met Ari, Brian, um, how many times did we meet Ari? 
Uh, how many times have we actually met, like, all together? How many times did we meet Ari? We met him a couple times. He's we a had, yeah. Mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah. My God. Ari Jr. finally popped one out. Yeah, I heard about that. I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> We're gonna have it. We're gonna have a little, another little line dike. <laughs> oh, my whole high school friend Matt showed up in the chat. All high school buddies. We go a long, a long time back. Let's see. Hey, that's good. Charlie Kimball again. Charlie was a nice guy. Like Charlie, what I like about Charlie, Charlie goes into depth about it, about the cars. Like he describes he the whole Instagram stories, the qualifying procedure, and everything goes. Well in depth into it. And Very in depth, yeah. Sage Karam. Well, you can tell that this is Monday. This is after he qualified. He was out and about signing. <laughs> I don't know what they got wrong with the car because they qualified on the Sunday because on Saturday the car was shit. It was, yeah. And he even spooked um, Sage himself and he was incompetent to drive. I, it, well, I heard like uh, Hildebrand that, that like took over a couple stints for him during practice, I think. Yeah, the car was just off. Mm -hmm. What was wrong with the car? But you you would see you would see Karen qualify for the race. Like in the, on his first lap, he'd be yep. like in 20th. Then on his second or third lap, he'd be like in 34th. Whew. Which was weird. No, I, I, I couldn't believe that stage Karen couldn't hold four saw laps like that. I know. It was embarrassing. I was like, wow, this is a that say with Sage is in danger of getting bumped. <laughs> I mean, thankfully he made it, but it was relatively close, man. He he was he, he was really off. I don't know what was up with him, but first of all, you know, I think he needs a full time ride. That's just what I think. Shall, I we, mean, tell, shall we tell the general public why he lost that Ganassi job? I mean, it's a dead rumor, but <laughs> it's a dead rumor. But don't hold us to it. This guy, Sage Karam, had a top-notch ride with Chip Ganassi. The rumor was he was let go because he had sex with Chip Ganassi's daughter. <laughs> and the crowd and goes wild. Hearing about this one. <laughs> oh, I got this top right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck his daughter. <laughs> oh, God. Well, that, that was a genius move. Clearly. We see it in the last ticket. <laughs> I was not on TV for that autograph. <laughs> but you were for Mario. I saw you. I was like, oh my God, it's the ginger. I mean, Robbie. <laughs> I don't believe that hat that I wear is so recognizable. Mm -hmm. You guys were you guys were playing Spot the Noonan the whole time at the Carbon Night Classic. Yeah, we were, and then we even like, uh, like uh, we had this little group, and we were watching uh, the Carbonite Classic. And Robbie was on like the other uh, side of the track taking photos, <laughs> and we saw his little just bright hat, and we're just like, let's all take a photo of him, and then send it at the same time to his phone number. <laughs> apparently, now I'm going to be screwed when I go to NASCAR races because they, apparently Penske released a Ryan Blaney hat that bright neon yellow. I said, I got to continue the tradition. I, I got to stand out like a freaking sore thumb. Oh, you will, dude. <laughs> He's some asshole in, in the club Pocono seats on Sunday photo shooting with a bright neon hat. Just don't even underestimate who the hell that is. Hmm. The only thing, though, is I hope that the NASCAR race has that hat because it's Penske official merchandise. I don't know if that's track, also at the track itself, too, or what, but. That'd be cool if I can get that hat. But right, here's also Joseph Newgarden again. And uh, here's Sage Karam again. So I, I, walk, I just keep walking throughout the garage. Like I walk throughout all the aisles of the garage area and I just meet the drivers over and over again. Believe me, you know, they know me on a first name basis, a lot of these people at this point. And here's J.R. Hildebrand. Sign this car. Got J.R. JR, I must say, his mullet's pretty freaking cool. I know, yeah. I, I I like to call him the racing Jesus. I'm like, oh god, there he is. <laughs> I mean, he straight up looks like it. Hell, just imagine Jesus in a fire suit. That's that's JR Hildebrand. Let <laughs> him walk into a church. He's got the look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Talk about holy mackerel. <laughs> oh god. Kaiser. Colton Herda. 
Ryan Hunter Ray. Here's Zach Beach again. Zach Beach. And uh, Rossi. Rossi, like I said, Rossi off the track is a damn cool Rossi. He is. I mean, heck, I was really surprised. I was like, I like, I like this guy. <laughs> you know, also got Jack Harvey. Again. Oreo Servia. So here's a funny story about Oreo Servia. Oh, Lord. I didn't hear this. Yeah. <laughs> I went to go see him. And it was after his practice run. He was talking to some media. Mm -hmm. of the interview. And then when he was signing our autographs, he goes, he goes, I only signed a few more and I have to go. I have to meet my engineer. He is going to be very bad at me because I am talking to you and not talking to him. <laughs> <laughs> Servia just, you know, saying it straight up. <laughs> he was like, I got to go back to work. <laughs> and uh, Give him though, how he... This uh, picture signed by Buddy Rice. Uh, Buddy Rice is the spotter, I believe, for J.R. Hildebrand. Just like Rick Mears is a spotter for Elio. Oh, gee, I wonder who signed this photo. Hmm, I'm going to say Maybe. a Penske driver. Nobody important. <laughs> Nobody important. Hell, you know, <laughs> who the hell? <laughs> and I just won this little race called the 500 on Sunday, and two screaming fans caused seismic activity and turned three over it. Well, I mean, I almost passed out, but after that, I was screaming. <laughs> Scott Dixon signed this photo. This is the Ford GT. Scott Dixon signed this one, too. This really should go in the Sunday pile because this – why is this in the Monday pile? While mm -hmm. it was on Monday, it was, it was getting bailed. <laughs> I got out Jr. the night before I got busted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. That's – uh. I knew That's something awkward. would help with him because Al Jr. lit up a cigarette, first of all, when I met him. I said, Oh, Jesus. Since when does Al Jr. smoke? I, and I, I said, say. Something was off about him. Like he was he was being overly flirty with the women. He was very un, he was acting very unprofessional. I was like, What is up with him? And then on Monday morning, I read the friggin' article. Yeah, Monday morning. Busted. <laughs> and yeah. uh, so this photo, signed by Townsend Bell and Jimmy Vassar. Oh, nice. You can get Vassar on there. And here's the wonderful Bobby Unser. Uncle Bobby. <laughs> Bobby. I'll tell you what, though. He is one hell of a good to storyteller, Uncle Bobby. Uncle Bobby is a hell of a storyteller. So anyways... We go to meet him at the jewelry store over in Speedway, on Speedway, over northwest side of town. Yes. And we go to meet him, and I said to him, you know, you, Sam Posey, and Paul Page were the best commentating crew I know. And he goes, you know, Sam Posey was great and all, but he just couldn't keep his damn mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know those two definitely went at it. <laughs> Sam, you're wrong. <laughs> And I said, you know, you're in the turn two sweets all the time. He goes, yeah, I wanted to get away from him. <laughs> and he goes, you know, when I was up in the turn two sweets, I was sitting there partying with a bunch of nice young girls. And one of the producers goes, what the hell is that damn answer doing now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So that was the le the story of Uncle Bobby. And the legend. Stories, uh is this faster or is this, or is this T Bell? Let's see. Could be either one. That's T Bell. That's Townsend. It's down Okay. Because Jimmy Vassar has a longer autograph than that. Ah, I see. But, you know, this is why, you know, like I wish, you know, people who go to the races have like this kind of accessibility everywhere because, you know, these drivers, man, they are, they're hell of a lot, hell of a nice people. And oh, uh, they are. Okay, so all these are the Legends autographs. Here's Ari again. Got him to sign this, I believe, at a Kro at one of the Krogers we got him to sign in that. We did, yep. Uh, this is his 97 winner. He signed that. Gary would like this car. They sound like NASCARs. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, natural aspirated V6s. They sound like freaking stock cars. Those are the times. <laughs> 
Uh, not yellow. It's green again. What the fuck are they doing? Oh god, I remember that. That that was such a. Oh god, the associating of that race was just an eyesore. I can't blame Ari <laughs> for being pissed. And here's, and that, here's that was Dario, the best. Dario signed his 07 winner. It's crazy. I remember these two cars racing on the racetrack. I remember seeing Weldon win 05. I remember seeing Dario win 07. And it, it just goes, I can't believe it. I, I remember seeing these cars on the racetrack, and now they're in the museums. Brian, we're becoming artifacts. Oh, they are. Every year in, year out. Oh, yeah. You saw I really feel old. These two cars I saw race in person. Oh, by the way, that's a replica. The Hunter Ray is not an original. You know why it's yep, not it's original? Not. He wrecked the car at Pocono. Hmm. He took the winning car at Pocono and trashed it. Wow. Kind of like the same thing that happened with Sato. <laughs> Don't get me started on Sato, him crashing that car, because he took out Dixon, and Lewis was a was a very uh, very salty little man after that race. Speaking of that, I mean, if Derek's watching this, uh, that autograph's for you, bud. <laughs> it's cool meeting Dixon. So here's Lone Star JR. He signed this one again. This is the original Yellow Submarine. Uh, yeah, oh, yes. He had the honors to host the original. Yeah, LVO can run the Yellow Submarine only once every year. This is the original. And um, this is his 75 car. Quite frankly, he should have won in this car, but the rains came. <laughs> what seat were you in when we watched the 500? I was in turn three. Turn I was three, in Northeast Vista. Northeast Vista, section 12, row P, C20, I think I was. Down right to the dot. And quite frankly, we're renewing those seats again next year because with the 500, you can't fool around with that race. Yeats, oh God. <laughs> I think it's a lot of you to find me because. Here we go I again. <laughs> Oh, man. Stop it, Brian. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thanks to Brian and Ben Seth for helping me get some of these signed because I had a whole bunch of photos for JR and Ari, and they all helped me get them signed. So Ari signed. Yep. And here's the, all the Rossi photos I took in the pits because on Monday, Ron's back get in the pits on the Monday after qualifying. So we got into pits, and I got Rossi to sign all five of them. You know, granted, I only handed him three myself, but Brian had two, so I gave Brian a couple. And we don't, we don't know, Brian, we walked into that, that jewelry store, and it wound up being an actual launch party. It did, yeah. I was like, this is different. <laughs> it was like a full-on party. I was like, wow. <laughs> I got free food out of it, so I couldn't complain. Sure, free food, and we almost had a shot of – Free stuff too, but you know, us with raffles is like winning the lotto. It's never gonna happen. <laughs> I better off getting struck by lightning than winning winning stuff. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so flash forward to Thursday at the quickest autograph session we've ever been in our lives because nobody was there. Buddy nobody. Rice. There's Buddy Rice again. Like literally, I could have handed Buddy Rice like ten photos and he could have signed all of them. That's how mm -hmm. few were there. When I only brought four of them. And I got all four of them signed. Uh, this was the Thursday, so now we're fast forwarding to the Legends autograph session. Yes, I got the Rocket Man Rick Mears to sign that. Uh, he always signs thanks on his autograph. He yeah, that. that's his signature. And now we're gonna flash forward to the Penske autograph session. Oh, my favorite memory. <laughs> A little bit smeared, but. It's a 10 cent photo. I'm not really going to lose sleep over a smear 10 cent photo. <laughs> and here's Pagano. He signed the, the photo from Pocono. That's a beautiful livery. There's New Garden again from the pits. I was sitting there right in the pits with um, when Joseph pulled out. So Joseph signed all of his photos from his pit stall. Joseph hey. signed that one too. Hey, Kyle, what's going on, man? Kyle showed up. My friend James showed up. Uh, nice. We're all, getting good, we're all getting people here. We are. Uh, Keep it going. <laughs> you know, the rules for the Penske autograph session were, you know, one per person, but you can get in line multiple times. And it was a two-hour session. 
So the guy originally told me, because believe me, we were the first people in line. We showed up three hours for the session because we literally got lunch and we were right next and we wound up being right next to the place. So I said, Brian, let's just sit around. Yeah, we sit around and just kill some time. <laughs> we literally sit around and kill some time. And with the autograph session, we got our one picture signed. We got back in line. And the guy says, you know what? You guys have been here for a long time. And, you know, not many people, people have left. So just bring all your shit out and get it all signed. So literally, I had like eight photos. I handed Brian three. I handed Seth three. <laughs> get them all signed. <laughs> just like a stack of cards. Like, you get some. You get some. <laughs> So they all got them signed. That's why we have an overload here. Power signed. I Power had a sign like literally like nine of my photos. I thought he must have thought I was freaking crazy by the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, With those big eyes like oh bloody hell, Mike. <laughs> that was a horrible accident, but you know, Power's E for power. effort, I guess. It's Page. No, this is gonna be very. This is gonna be very. Uh, Repetitive because Mr. Noonan just got just got all his photos out, and I literally just handed them to all of my friends. Yep. What are good friends for? <laughs> I just literally handed them to Brian and said, "Just take them, get them signed." So I hey, any chance I got to meet Pasino, I'll Brian. do it. Because <laughs> literally, and this, and the reason why I get photos like these, they all look the same, is because with my camera settings. You get a uh, continuous shooting on my camera, so I can literally have a car. Let's say, for example, at the Poconos on Saturday, uh, Noah Gregson can come down the front straightaway. I can point him coming down the front straightaway, press and hold, and I can take like twenty pictures of him going down the straightaway. That's what I do. So that's why you get like so many repetitive shots like these. And my life has become Groundhog's Day the last twenty, last ten minutes. I just showed a bunch of photos that looked relatively the same. <laughs> uh, the photo, and this is uh from the Legends autograph session. Mario still owns this car. However, though there is a big error on that car, though. This is '94 Lola, I believe. Is this Lola, I believe, or is it a Reynard? I think it's a Lola. Looks like a Lola, yeah. But regardless, these are the sexiest piece ever. I think it is. I mean, you can't go wrong. And it's just amazing, like how me and Rob are having a good conversation about this in the museum about how much of a big sponsor Kmart was back then. I mean, it's just sad to see them gone. I think Garrett's probably think I'm on drugs, but uh, Kmart had so much money they paid the Andretti's hundreds of millions of dollars for their contract. I wish I had like one percent of that. <laughs> <laughs> Kmart was throwing money at the Andretti's. That's how much money they had. <laughs> and Newman Haas profited the hell out of Kmart. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh, by the way, I use a Sony uh, Alpha as my camera. My friend James asked me that. Takuma Sato. And our Lord and Savior. Hey, we're okay. Where's David Lane when you need him? <laughs> you know, it's yeah. funny story. Mr. Newman is known to have shitty hearing. Granted that I listen to race cars all my life. I my, my hearing is almost shot at this point. So when Buddy Lazier asked me to hold the photo because he had a surgery on his wrist, he goes, can you hold on to this? I thought he said, do you own this? I said, yeah, I own it. It's my photo. No. <laughs> and he goes, no, 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 no. Can you hold this? I said, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Say that to the Buddy Lazier, the 96 Indy 500 winner. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, some schmuck on the internet took this photo and I printed off my shirt and I claimed it as my own. Totally. <laughs> I mean, yeah. makes sense. Of course they all make. <laughs> the hell do I look like? <laughs> Anyways, let me get my phone charger out because this is this camera battery is this phone battery is about to die. But you know, I'm like, has my Rob hearing go. that bad? And I'm only 26. Can you imagine when I'm 76? Oh, I don't even want to know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, heck, even when we 
<laughs> you, you still miss you miss to turn us uh, all the time, Rob, when we're on Skype. <laughs> it's hilarious. Now, there's, there's been quite a few funny ones. Mm -hmm. sound I can't repeat on TV. Yeah. Can't keep it PG. <laughs> and I misinterpreted what the hell they said. Mm -hmm. But anyways, Bobby Ray Hall signed this one. So did Bobby sign that one as well? And Buddy Rice signed this one. Buddy Rice again. And this autograph came from Chip Ganassi. Chip Ganassi is ironically in the IMS Hall of Fame, so we got him to sign those. Well, for one day itself, right there. It's imp it's impressive. <laughs> So now we go into, I believe, Carb Day. Oh, Carb Day. <laughs> First of all, I'm not a big fan of Carb Day personally. I mean, I love being at the track. I love the accessibility to drivers. But I, there's a reason why I don't go anywhere on Carb Day besides the garages. There's a lot of casual fans that are getting pissed drunk. They are literally over the speedway, spilling their beers, mm -hmm. <laughs> in my particular liking. <laughs> Mr. Newton does not associate with those people. No, quite sorry. Frankly, quite frankly, if some asshole develops bug spray that helps human beings, I am pepper spraying everybody on car day. <laughs> oh god, there's gonna be bodies everywhere. <laughs> hey man, wanna be here? <laughs> oh, I don't feel so good. <laughs> oh god. Uh. <laughs> I'm the type of guy that hangs out with the old guys that's like, you know, I've been here for 30 years, I got this number of autographs. I like those people. But the drunks, the casual fans, stay the fuck away from me. Mm-hmm. There's, I mean, they're everywhere, dude. Even on race day, they're going to be like, hey, who's who won the race? <laughs> and they're just, they're just chugging a freaking uh, you know, Miller Lite or whatever. <laughs> like, then there's the casual fans that just don't know what the hell's going on. The casual mm -hmm. fans, like, I'm talking, like, people, like, restart zone at Texas level, motor speedway level bullshit. The people, oh, Lord. You ever get a Texas <laughs> motor speedway has a restart zone bar? Imagine, imagine all those, those schmucks that are in there. Oh, I'm gonna watch the Phillies game while this is going off. I'm gonna watch the Rangers game. I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna see the basketball game. Uh, the Blue Rangers. Game. Here we go again. I don't know why. No. I wonder how my stocks are doing. <laughs> Whoa! What's in the news these days? I got my newspaper. I'm reading it. <laughs> Not paying a fuck attention to what's going on in the race. Wow, who's that? Who's driving the shell car? I shop at <laughs> all the time. Hey, who drives a Napa car? Oh, is that Chase Elliott? Is he doing the double? <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Jeez, oh. Lord, I can't. With... I just can't. <laughs> if I had to come up with a George Carlin list of people who ought to be killed, I love George Carlin. <laughs> George Carlin is my hero. He pushes boundaries. Mm -hmm, he does. He, he has no filter. You know, he would say what's on top of his mind. I mean, could you imagine if he was alive today? All this stuff that's going on now with the PC crap. Oh, he would tear that up. <laughs> that's another thing I would like to have pepper spray with. Oh, well, now my stocks are doing. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't uh, get I mean, they're everywhere, man. Where, wherever you go. That the bipolar opposites, I don't like. But then right in the middle where we are, perfect. Mm-hmm. It was a good mix. I feel, again, this is from the Penske autograph session on Carb Day. Carb Day, they literally have an autograph session at the Penske trailer, which fashionably late was Elio. You know. <laughs> 
There's Elio, fashionably late, signed that one. Joseph Newgarden. Joseph again. And here's Power. And that's the last of the penalties. Not for real. Charlie, Charlie Kimball. And granted, you know, Charlie Kimball is a hell of a nice guy. People give him shit for not being a really good driver, but the guy qualified. The guy, the guy was the only Carlin car that qualified. I mean, exactly. That's that's an accomplishment, man, <laughs> for that team. And there's uh, Ed Carpenter. Managed to get Ed's autograph. Finally. Took me till carb day to get freaking Ed Carpenter. Yeah, I mean, when it's the month of May, Ed Carpenter, man, he's, <laughs> he's hard to come by. Ed Carpenter. If you think Dale Jr. winning at Talladega was a big deal, when Ed Carpenter wins the 500, the place is going to be set on fire. It was my pick mm -hmm. to win. I, I was picking him too. Mm -hmm. This is going to be fires. It's going to be riots. There's going to be street parades when Ed Carpenter wins. Mm -hmm. there, there, there's going to be you know some sort of magnitude. <laughs> like someone's going to mistake it for an earthquake at IMS. It's going to be hectic. I'm surprised the Richter seal didn't show us when we when we celebrated Pagano's win. Whew. <laughs> I still can't believe it. Although it started to get into my head. My but... voice did crack and I sounded like Alvin and Chipmunks when I was screaming. Mm-hmm. And then there I am, just like uh, like just so overwhelmed, my head's down. I'm like, he just won, and I just my face turns wide, and I'm like, oh, I think I'm gonna, you know, <laughs> lose my balance for a second. I, I just slowly just go back. <laughs> Okay, so when Rossi passed Pagano with two to go, I I was like, that's it, we're done. Mm hmm Same. Three to go. But then Pagano had the best turn three of his life, and in the next lap he gets him. I I just still can't believe it, man. That was just the move right there. <laughs> that was the move of the race, man. Well, not mm -hmm. Maybe not. I think the move of the race probably was one of Rossi's moves. Oh yeah, I was about, yeah, I was about to say, yeah, Rossi, man, he's – you gotta give the guy credit. He is a madman. Grass. Mm -hmm. There was literally a pass in the grass with Ross. I think he clipped the grass and passed somebody. That guy, I mean, I've heard stories of the old guys they say Rossi would have been dead if it was 50 years ago with the moves he made. Mm hmm. He just but goes for it. Guy, that guy's amazing. But is Sage Karam. <laughs> Chase Elliott. Sage Karam. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Bro, nothing though, you know. Bro, what am I not doing? Uh, no, no, it, it, it's it's Ron Caps. <laughs> Good right. God. No, it's oh Michael Waltrip. I'm in the market. Oh, Mikey. Ladies, oh, did you read the Wall Street Journal? Yeah. And it begins. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I can't get enough of that. Your friend Legendary Washington in this DM in this uh group chat. Spencer Piggott. No, I was not mm -hmm. on this autograph. <laughs> and oh my gosh, she made the race. It's a miracle. <laughs> it's a Did bloody I miracle. Totally I totally ruled her out in the beginning of the in the beginning of the month. I said she's not gonna make the race. Oh, excuse me. Oh, everybody did. Hell, everybody like. Nobody thought she was going to make it, but she dumbed us all, and she just made it. Well, she certainly threw me wrong. I looked like a total dumbass when she made the field. <laughs> <laughs> she made the field with flying colors, too. She only made one attempt, and that was it. <laughs> Where's the Larson stuff at? It's in my cabinet right here. Somewhere in that, you know. Lottery, man. <laughs> If Larson fans, if legendary Larson shows up in my house, I think a lot is be a lot of stuff missing here. Mm hmm. Or any Larson fan. <laughs> Zach Beach. Zach Beach again. I got to admit, that die cast is growing on to me, man. That 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 livery. Well, it's that, beautiful. Well, there's no 118 of it, so the 164 is all you're going to get. Yeah, that was a fail. <laughs> you would think the title sponsor for the five for the big race would have, you know, both scales. Nope. So green light has their flaws too. So, <laughs> and the guy who literally drove the worst race of his life. Ah, uh, it's a shame because that livery man is beautiful, but that's gonna be some bad memories right there. You know, when I saw Mark from from tenth to thirtieth, I 
I knew he was in trouble. But uh, here's Jack Harvey. Here's Oreo Serbia. I have to go. My engineer's going to be mad at me. I'm talking to you and not talking to him. Oh, that's pretty cool. BH28 Racing. I love Zach Beach. <laughs> You know, Zach Beach was actually a bullying victim. I don't know if you knew that. You know, I heard about that, yeah. Zach Beach was bullied all throughout his high school, all of his school life. Well, look wow. who's laughing now, bullies. Well, who's I mean, laughing now? I mean, Christ, he was also on Price is Right. And that, that was awesome. <laughs> I love that Price is yeah. Right. The Price mm -hmm. is Right and IndyCar, my two favorite things on TV. <laughs> it all came together. Jordan King. This was a very simple livery. I love Jordan King's car. Mm -hmm. And this was Colton Herta. He signed this photo. Colton Herta. Santino Ferrucci signed this one. I actually got Ferrucci finally on carb day. He Again, definitely I, impressed me. Really, really proud. Of also. Felix Rosenquist. Nice. Finally, Rosenquist on carb day. And here is George Steinbrenner. Steinbrenner signed that. <laughs> fourth again. Here's Graham. That is Graham. Yes, that is Graham. Felix and Felix. No, I do not remember IndyCar before the split because I was three years old when the damn series split. <laughs> I think none of us well, did. If you ask any sane IndyCar fan who won the split, they would all say NASCAR. <laughs> NASCAR's popularity exploded after 96. Uh, let's see. Here's the last bit of photos that I got signed. This is on Legends Day. Oh, my God. He wasn't late for this one. Elio. Oh, I know Elio. He's from Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> all the casual fans. <laughs> was he really? He won. Uh, yeah, and he actually won. Can't say that with no his No kidding. Mm -hmm. Or Mikey. Oh, I want to forget that. <laughs> oof. <laughs> oh, big, big oof. oof. Holy crap. <laughs> that 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 really happened. Mikey was on Dish with the Stars. Wow. Anything oof. is possible. No kidding, brother. <laughs> Marco got on his line. Connor Daly got on his line. Connor Daly again. On a daily. Here's Big Al. All Big Al's autographs. There's Big Al again. And that's that's it. I think I literally spent the last 30 minutes showing damn photographs. And it's impressive. <laughs> I mean, every year, man, Al, it just gets better and better. That's an archive. Mm -hmm. It's like All that's got to go in a book. That's incredible. I think that was just for, you know, the month of May. I mean, you still got, like, many other races to do as well. So it's uh, it's going to be one hell of a good summer. It's going to be a hell of a summer for all of us, man. Mm -hmm. Hold on, do we have any more diecasts to show or any more autographs to show, Brian? Uh, what, on my side or your side? Or... Well, I don't know. I think you probably got more. I'll wait. Probably, yeah. I mean, heck, uh, well, you know what? I mean, since uh, I might go and show, um, I did got more of these 500 winners of the pace cars. Um, I actually got the whole set now because before I, I, I had um, I had the Bobby Unser win that uh, my good friend Jill gave to me. So that was my first one. And then I got the Al Jr. Valvoline win as well. And um, at the memorabilia show, first of all, guys, I mean, if you guys are a big, I mean, if you guys really love diecast or if you guys are just now getting to any cars and you want to get all the classics, uh, the memorabilia show is the way to go. There are so many great deals. I mean, these cars right here, I I mean, sh I, I think I got these like four bucks a piece, dude. It's a steal. Jesus. There's Mario Andretti's um, win from 69. That's AJ's. Uh, oh, that's AJ's. Sorry. I mean, there's so many orange cars. <laughs> so that's AJ Foyt. Oh, there's my one fail the day. Oh, that's Coyote Red. <laughs> Well, you know, Listen, I like to do. <laughs> every year, I want to message Store Haas and yell at them because they have a number 14 car. Why don't you do a fucking Coyote Red throwback? 
<laughs> that would real. be cool. like that. That would be amazing. Like, uh, I mean, I, I I'm happy yeah, with the throwbacks that we got this year, perfect, but that's mm -hmm. the perfect throwback to make. Why don't you make it? Even just make the Copenhagen car, the one he drove at Daytona. You can make that throwback. Hopefully someday, man. Hell, I mean, the 14s had a lot of great throwbacks, but I mean, come on. There's a reason why Tony Stewart got the 14. <laughs> for Foy, man. Also, do you know why Kevin Harvick chose number four? Um, no. Why is that? He idolizes Rick Mears, and Rick Mears won his fourth in the number four car. Really? Wow. I Interesting. Suddenly have, I suddenly have a lot more respect for Harvick because before I'm like, Harvick. Mm. <laughs> that, that, that's interesting. <laughs> uh, that, that, there's probably some hardcore fans watching this to be like, oh, USOB. Even <laughs> though I'm old, but I think I'm number four, I still think of the Kodak car. Yeah, it's true. Uh, who drove that car? Uh, Marlin, I think. Yeah, Marlin, Marlin uh, Skinner. Yeah, Marlin, yeah. Skinner. It's, yeah, Skinner, too. Mm -hmm. Man. Holy crap, we are old. <laughs> I <didn't> remember that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, here's uh, the man himself, Rick Mears. Really nice car with the correct space car as well. That was one thing I loved about Johnny Lightning when they did this. They only made, like, what, eight of these, I believe? Well, like, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I can count eight. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> this one, I... Yo, what's up? Legendary Larson pointing something out wearing the Grump shirt right now. <laughs> <laughs> and the only reason why I bought this shirt was because it was five, no, I think it was two dollars off of Penske's website. It was huh. Two I bought it. Number Three two shirts. for two dollars. I like that. <laughs> the Montoya, uh, listen, Grant said I respect Montoya, but he's a grump ass. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, he's he's okay. He's like, can you smile for once? Like, really? I'm like, yeah, you won two 500s. Be happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Montoya. Like my friend Jerry Larson said, you better get plenty of Larson shots at Pocono. Well, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get shots of everybody. <laughs> oh, man. Literally, literally, I think now because uh, Saturday at Pocono is going to be – just qualifying and no really race type of practices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my uh, camera to like a good shutter speed. This way, when they do their two lap runs, I'm going to get at least one crisp image of each car qualified coming down the pits. I want to get one crisp image after they qualify. And on Sunday, I'm going all out. Sunday, I'm going for really artsy like photos. Got to go for it. Rossi sure did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you can perform a pass in the grass of Pocono, I mean, I like to see you drive. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen someone drive as hard as Rossi did uh, last Ooh. Sunday. My God, man. Rossi put on a – was a freaking madman the whole race. Especially, he was, man. Especially during the last 20 laps. He was so angry after that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he was. <laughs> oh, yeah, when he was shaking his fist. <laughs> that's from you. I mean, 20 <laughs> seconds. That, that's pretty slow. <laughs> when he shook his fist at uh, at Serbia, I was I was laughing. I, I was like, I didn't know me pageant was leaning, so I wanted Serbia to hold him up. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Serbia was my best friend for a while. <laughs> But I mean, he, he was up there, yeah. No due respect, though. He deserves another 500. He really does. He's definitely, I mean, he's already a star in the sport, but he's definitely going to win a championship. And you know what? With how we've seen him drive so far these last two years, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets up there and gets a third or a fourth win. But he, he's definitely will be guaranteed a multiple Indy 500 winner. That's for certain. Oh, it's almost a guarantee. Also, did mm -hmm. you know, uh, know Garrett might be going to Texas Motor Speedway for the Cup race? The I heard the IndyCar ticket sales are drastically up after that 500. Really? Oh wow! Yeah, the the IndyCar sales are way up. Apparently, interesting. I mean, they said so much that a couple of fans suggested that Eddie Goss is they open up more grandstands. Oh wow! That's a first. That, that's a big first. Wow! I've never heard that <laughs> one in like a decade. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the IndyCar race, you know, they don't sell all the seats. Like, they only sell, like, you know, part, like a good chunk of the front stretch. 
but mm-hmm. they're thinking about opening up more of the grandstands that are on the front stretch because the ticket sales are really going up. Mm-mm-mm, man. All I can say though is if I go to the Texas IndyCar race, somebody pointed out on Twitter last year, and I was like, no, this is quite true. Make the truck race the morning, the afternoon of the IndyCar race and make it a true support race. That's uh, why. I could see that. True. Kill two races in one stone. Be great. That would be, yeah. I mean, it would make it more interesting and unique. I mean, that, that's for certain. <laughs> um, Larson fans said, what's your favorite item I got at Indy? Well, obviously mine was the helmet. If you go back in the video, you'll see the helmet. It's going to be it has all the Penske winners on it. Not including Pagano because we produced it for the month of May. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Good problem to have. I'm going to get him to find the visor of it. And the helmet's going right on that top shelf in that glass case right there. The helmet's going to be going there. It's going to have the hero card in the back. Man, oh, man, dude. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, My favorite item? I mean, my God. The, 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 I mean, all the diecasts are really cool. But you know what, man? I... I really appreciate the, the program diecast that we got uh, with the 500 winner. I mean, that was pretty cool. That Hot Wheels, uh, you know, made a, co- a commemorative uh, diecast for Mario Andretti. So I, I thought that was pretty cool. I think the, I think the Mario Andretti diecast were probably the big favorites. They, they went all out this year with the Mario Andretti. They did. they did. Granted, mm-hmm. I hope they do something next year for their 50th anniversary of the Johnny Lightning win. Oh, yeah, true. I mean, you can't go wrong with this car. Just a beauty. I mean, the Marco Andretti card, that was a very popular mm-hmm. one. I, I can't say enough, though. That card is going to be freaking rare, dude. If it you, is. If you see the Marco Andretti card at the Speedway, don't even second question get it because that is going to be one of those die casts at the end of this year. You're going to go, where the hell can I get one? Oh, damn. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't think that IndyCar with, with its – if you think if you look at the numbers of IndyCar racing, like as far as like fan viewership and uh, overall you know, attention or popularity, it's still miles away from what NASCAR is levels on. But the die-cast mm-hmm. market is at a peak right now in the IndyCars. They are, yeah. When, they, when a green light can produce 1,500 Hinchcliffe cars, and they would all be – gone by the end of the year like man, it, oh, man. impressive <laughs> like last year's wickens card they made like what a thousand of them you could not find them at the end of the year rossi's car you couldn't find it dixon's car was gone at the end of the year and uh, for what i heard i mean uh, from twitter uh as soon as pagano like won the race like his diecast were literally gone <laughs> at the track yeah, as soon as Pagano won the 500, people bought and bought and bought and bought that, that car. Mm-hmm. And now it's almost gone. So good luck finding that until we get the 500 win. <laughs> well, listen, you know, if, you, if, you, if anybody watching this video purchases the standard Simon Pagano car, can I slap you upside the head? <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> Can you wait until November when the 500 winner comes out? <laughs> like, really? That's that's that, that is you you, you can you can wait till the 500 winner comes out. That's gonna be the car you get. Which series what you guys have? Diecast. Ooh, uh, ooh, diecast. Um. You know, I got a lovely 2013 Canon winner up there. <laughs> I'll say that yeah, soon I, with the 2019 I, I, I one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that car is like rare as hell, dude. Holy crap. Um, I still probably mm-hmm. get to see my Carl Edwards 2011 All Star win, uh, Elite. I did that, that. That car is just amazing. And that's when Lionel actually had, you know, pretty damn good quality when they first started. Not anymore. Luke, uh, the only person reading comments is me. Because <laughs> I only have to my phone with the live stream upload, and that's the only uh, comment section I have. Is the twenty third? I have twenty thirteen diecast, and that's rare. Yeah, no, no crap, that's rare. 
If you go find it today, good luck finding it for less than 100 bucks. Oh, Luke Skywalker, you are awesome. <laughs> yeah, Luke Skywalker, that's a, pretty, that's a good name. That you is, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I wonder. Hmm. Popular movie. Uh, gee, I forget what the hell the name of it is. Like, yeah, yeah. Something. Star War. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that Mexican guy on Jimmy Kimmel's friggin' hysterical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he talks about the movies. <laughs> oh, that's Rob, pretty creative. Rob, we need to finish recording the video. What video, Larson fan? <laughs> oh god, we're recording a video? I didn't even know that. <laughs> I don't know what video he's talking about. What is what, what, what enlighten me or am I on drugs? Well, Lucas, you got some uh, awesome parents. So, I mean that that's living the tree, man. <laughs> you know, my he said my parents love Star Wars and they said name me Lucas. Oh nice. That's you what's know, up. The only son I'm gonna have is a cat. And I already got him named. His name's gonna be John. His middle name's gonna be Winston. Hmm. Who's that name after? I wonder who. Where do you think I get John Winston from? Oh, gee. Some guy. Very famous. He made a made a few hits. Just a few. <laughs> Not really. It's starting to ring up. No, no, I lost it now. Just some smart from <laughs> Liverpool. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> Joe from Newgarden diecast. Well, you're gonna have to get that one from Penske because so I, I only bought I bought two actually. I bought one for my friend Cole. Gotta ship that out Friday. Hey, Matt 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 uh, Faust is on here. Oh my god, Matt Faust is here. Hey, what's going on, buddy? My man. A good indie pal who didn't show up this year. But it's all good. <laughs> Legendary Lawrence and I didn't see Star Wars either, so don't don't feel too bad about that one. Oh Logan, this one's for you, man. Sorry to be the tease, but you get the scar. It's really nice. I know, Matt, it's been way too long, man. You know, we, we should we missed you at the five hundred this year, but you'll be here next year with us. <laughs> Someone just did start playing uh, the the stain song. <laughs> Oh wait, copyright. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's well, a no no. On turn three this year. It really was a lot of fun. Hundred percent chance of rain, my ass. I don't know what the meteorologists are thinking. They're like, oh, most of the day it's gonna rain. We no had rain. a race. We had a race. That's all <laughs> I'm gonna say. We had no rain. We ran the race in full, and it was good. Are we nope. getting any new 2019 Mustangs? Uh, well, I'm planning to. I mean, when Wave 4 comes out, I'm also going to do my diecast collecting with the NASCAR Authentics, so that's that's what's up. I'm planning to get most of mine as well. I think the PPG cars would be freaking sick. Oh, it is, yeah. I'm looking forward to all those. That Smithfield car and that. And if I don't have any luck, then maybe I'll go to a Cracker Barrel and see what happens. Probably don't do some get that crap to me. Probably I'll get that uh, Menards truck. There are two things that I cannot do on Saturday. One, mm -hmm. I cannot show up an hour early with a bronze badge and get in. Mm -hmm. I'm used to doing. Two, yeah. for the Fanatics trailers, I can't go, oh, here's my incarnation discount. Wrong sport, you idiot. They're like, the hell's this guy on? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that, that, that was. <laughs> Gotta love it. I mean, it pays to be a member of the nation. I mean, when you get an IndyCar Nation membership, you get 15% off of the merchandise tents. You also get like uh, auto, you can the autograph line. You can get hot laps. You can get credentials, media press conference access. You name it. Etc. <laughs> I gotta go with the legend level pretty soon over the summer because I'm planning to go to Mid Ohio. I would love to do Mid Ohio, believe me. I really gotta book the hotel eventually. But um I got I got I gotta book the hotel and I gotta gotta get that going because I wanna get a hot lap around Mid Ohio. Mm-hmm. 
No, we did not get any NASCAR diecast. It was the month of May, so we were at the Speedway. Yeah, I mean, they had them at the IMS Museum, but in a very little tiny corner. Just just goes to show you what IMS is all about. <laughs> they really cleaned that out, man. There was almost nothing. Yeah, they did, man. But um, they, I, yeah, in fact, they expanded the damn IndyCar wall. That was a great thing. Yeah, that was surprising, man. I, they, It's like basically their own little section now. It's amazing. Oh, Matt Faust wants to do Mid Ohio. Yeah, we should definitely do that. I I really want to do it. Like I I I love Mid Ohio. It's a fun track. One of these years. All I will say, you know, Mid Ohio. Like I really wish they get rid of some of the catch fencing there because the, some of the photo ops from there. If you move the catch fencing, it would be great. Oh, the catch fences. Yeah, I love them. <laughs> the, catch fences, the worst friggin' thing in there. Big catch fencing. All they will say that Mid Ohio is like becoming like one of those big, major, big deal races, and that's really good. Bobby, would you meet at Mid meet me Mid Ohio? Of course I would. Yeah, DC Comics uh, says the co the comment at night. <laughs> Sorry, I missed the stream. I'm watching the finals. But I'm not. A, oh God, I'm so offended. No, I'm not offended at all. <laughs> uh oh, someone gets salty. The reason why we uh, upload these videos as actual videos is that you can go back and watch the whole thing entirely. You, you know, you can fast forward through all the shit you don't want to see. You want to see specific parts. We can do that. So that's why we do that. Why doesn't David do diecast reviews anymore? David doesn't do them because they're not profitable. He doesn't get a return on investment for them. That's true. In fact, he used to do gaming videos. I wonder what happened to that series. That was like the most profitable series for him. Yeah, when he did like the NASCAR Heat videos. Yeah, I remember those. Yeah. Hmm. But David's doing re did a really good job this month in May. He put on a great coverage. Yeah, his Indy 500 month coverage was just amazing. I mean, it, it's just getting better and better every year. Larson fan, I think David's in Michigan right now. Usually after the 500, he goes hang out with his family in Michigan. Yep. He's which, a busy, busy man. Which, uh, I don't know if you heard the latest rumor mill, but IndyCars are testing in Michigan this August. Oh, uh, really? On uh, the Speedway? That's what I heard. They're testing at Michigan. Dude. And then somebody, some big cheese at some Richmond media members said that IndyCars might be going back to Richmond. Aggressive grows around. You're the man. <laughs> Appreciate your support. <laughs> okay, I got a whole bunch of reviews that I filmed yesterday. Heck, and meanwhile, I'm still trying to do the diecast news and all this other stuff. So definitely tell vacation's over because we got to play the catch up game now. <laughs> oof. We got, we got a big, big oof for us. We got to really catch up on our videos. Granted, oh, though, it's all good. Month period where nothing was released, which played out for us. We got to buy all this stuff over here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> now dust out, but you know, yeah, that was great. But now, our poor friend over here. Oh, oh my god, oh my god, the Harford car. Oh, dude. Yeah, Listen those, to me. We're one of those. You have no those? idea how jelly I was of all the all the YouTubers that had that back in two thousand nine. I got both of them for uh, I think fourteen dollars. <laughs> Brand new mint. I I wanted them things so bad. That's probably my favorite uh, order I got from um from May, and I actually got it from Plan B Sales. I mean, they're literally like seven ninety nine. You cannot beat it. I need. Yeah, that was amazing. Plan B Sales had those in stock. Yeah. And I got a Dell Jr. for seven dollars that you can't even get on eBay. Like this car is literally like retired. Like you can't even find it anywhere. Mint seven again? bucks. Hmm? Oh geez. <laughs> uh, two thousand ten. The what? Two thousand ten. What? Two thousand ten car. Oh, the, the two thousand. Uh, both these were uh, two thousand ten and two thousand nine. The Dell Jr. one I was mentioning is two thousand ten. The oh, nice. car. Hmm. I was saying what scheme? Oh, my bad. Uh. Garrett, it's get all, it out you're only put 10.24 a night. You're already losing it? <laughs> Let me go get it out real quick. I have it put up in a cabinet. <laughs> oh, that's all good, Garrett. Yeah. 
Oh, you're, you're fine. You're fine. It's all good. <laughs> I am determined. <laughs> there it is. If I can get a good. Oh, that was fast. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that, that literally was like had lightning like, fast. Walk, like two feet. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good, luck, good luck paying retail price for that thing. Oh yeah, literally seven bucks free shipping. Couldn't beat it. Oh no, you can't beat them. You know, Plenty Sales does a really good job. Um, although we'll say, you know, if you really have a local die cash shop, just support them. There's none around me. I think the closest ones like in Houston or Austin, Texas, and I, I don't feel like driving an hour. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I hear you, man. I live in a very small town, like no more than twenty thousand people. I mean, there ain't jack. Larson fan, uh, NASCAR and Honda, you know, I, I think all that was was a bunch of big cheeses getting into a nice meeting, having a introduction, shake hands. I don't think anything more of that's going to come out. But if, if Honda did come over, that'd be pretty cool. I like Hondas. Hondas are really good cars. Hondas, Toyotas, before Nissan got bought by Renault, Nissans were good. Anything yep. from Japan, anything from Japan is really good. Anything from Japan is good. You know, it's easy to work on. Ryan over here does not like European cars because they're a pain in the ass to work on. <laughs> yeah, it's expensive. They, they are. Yeah, and, and you know, most of the stuff is plastic. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> so, I mean, that's my life in a nutshell. Hell, working on those damn cars. <laughs> <laughs> that's Larson fan. I drive a Nissan, and I next car I buy is gonna be a fucking a freaking Toyota. <laughs> oh god, all the NASCAR fans are gonna hate that. And be like, oh, you you joined the dark side. <laughs> Just don't get a Prius. Just don't get. A oh, Prius. for the love of God, yeah! If you get a Prius, <laughs> I you deserve to get your ba balls busted. Oof. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> big I oof. An electric car. Those things are. First weird. of all, I'm a big guy. I'm a pretty big guy. I would I would get all shriveled up in that car. I get claustrophobic. <laughs> Larry Larson's a little too late. He already owns some Nissan. <laughs> you know, the original car I bought was a 2004, and that was owned by Datsun. Those were good cars. But the 2010 is owned as a Renault engine in it. And Renault makes shit cars. <laughs> Say the same thing about their engines in F1. <sighs> yeah, how many retirements? Just come from a Ricardo fan. Mm hmm. God almighty. Yeah, my next car is going to be Toyota or Honda. I don't buy American cars. Ever since the recession, American cars, not the same anymore. Quality, not there anymore. I, I like that my car lasts a long time. I, I like reliability. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I think Toyotas make good cars. They last long. Now, I'm not looking for anything specifically brain spanking new or high performance. I just want to get a car that's reliable. I hear, man. Yeah, that's uh, that's what's up. But although if I was a rich millionaire, the car I would probably buy, oh, it would have to be a Ferrari probably. I'm Italian. <laughs> I never buy a Ferrari. Our good friend Joe ain't going to like that answer. <laughs> if I say anything bad about Ferrari in Italian, my Italian family, I'd be disowned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're gonna be like, get the hell out. <laughs> you like the Born Racer movie? I didn't see it yet. I never played it. <laughs> I still have I have the movie <laughs> I'm it. I've never seen it. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> Don't worry, you're not alone. I still haven't seen it either, so I heard car, some video car fans. <laughs> I heard so good that movie. Mm-hmm. Watch well, probably like Derek watching it because he's the big Dixon fan. <laughs> Who knows? CBS on every corner. Oh my God. And Speed. Remember in Speedway, Brian? Or was it? Was it Speedway where we, we were going somewhere? We it were. Was, we saw. On one side, it was a Walgreens on the other side. I said, my, my friggin' videos are following me everywhere. <laughs> they are. You can never get rid of those Grant vid videos. <laughs> Granted, I can't make those anymore because, you know, like I just don't have the anger in me anymore. I'm more of a chill, mellow guy. Mm -hmm. I'm just laid back whatsoever. But sometimes if you get me started on something like Ryan Hunter Ray's kids, mm -hmm. I'll get me started on that probably. It's like we're total opposites now. I used to be really chill back then, and now I'm like on the breaking point with lying now. I'm just letting everything all out now. <laughs> People like it now, so I'm like, I never knew I would get this far. 
the newcomers yeah. didn't hear the story. The newcomers didn't hear this. Yep. On Sunday after qualifying, I went to go to Dawson's on Main Street, which is a nice restaurant in Speedway, Indiana. I sat there. And people who know me personally know that I do not like kids. <laughs> I am not warm with kids. I would much rather do a swan dive off the freaking barrels down a bridge and land head first in the water than to pop out a kid. I I want I, I think they're they're little flats. So three screaming the kids yep. <laughs> And the three kids were freaking screaming their asses off. And they were screaming because they wanted their toys. They were screaming because they didn't know where their dad was. And I'm sitting there holding my head, getting a fucking migraine because I'm sitting here trying not to kill these little fuckers. And so I'm like filled with rage. I'm like, please get these little fucking rats out of my sight. <laughs> <laughs> so I was this close to saying to the mother, please, can you just get rid of them from public view? Get them out of my sight. Right before I was going to say that, the lady at the restaurant goes, the party for Hunter Ray will be ready in two minutes. I said, oh, Jesus, I almost cursed out Becky Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> When he told me that story, I was just like, oh, oh no, oh no, this is I not almost, good. I almost swore at Robbie Gordon's sister. <laughs> Hunter Ray, I love you, but my God, stop with the freaking sex, man. <laughs> God almighty. I mean, his, he's great and all, but his kids need controlling. Um, but luckily I didn't have any situations at the speedway because no kids kind of front of me in an autograph line. That was great. <laughs> Man. My God. Don't get me started on them. Oh man, I just can't. <laughs> it's so funny though, because I'm sitting there, like I'm saying, I'm saying swear words coming out of my, like, we're, like mumbling myself, like the F bomb, like 10 times in a row about these kids. And little did I know that was right on the race, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the guy in the bachelor hat? Uh, what bachelor hat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, talk about hat here. Holy crap. <laughs> but, but that sucker back on. Um, yeah, we had fun times. We had fun times month of May. What, what other stories do we have from the month of May that we could tell? Oh God! <laughs> we could go back to the Bobby Unser one with the the lady with the watch. <laughs> okay, so we did have there was a sign that was clear as freaking day. The store will be closed from four thirty to five o'clock in preparation for the Bobby Unser signing. Mm -hmm. This, this, I'm just gonna say. What the hell? That was yours, Brian. Anyways, go ahead. Was... My problem. Yeah, good. You're good. So, anyways, at 4:50 in the afternoon, this genius shows up, banging on the window. Look, was like, "Why is it closed? I'm just gonna get my watch." <laughs> stupid idiot! Did, did, did you see the sign? Don't you read what the eyes God gave you? <laughs> <laughs> I was I was trying to hold my laugh to dear God we were waiting that line and I just me and Rob just looked at each other and just like oh this is gonna be a good one to tell the, the boys and <laughs> everyone <laughs> like, do not read at a third grade level that the stores can be closed for the next 10 minutes can we fucking wait no, dude, I love the part like at like we were do, doing our autograph sessions, guys, at uh at the Kroger. Like literally, every time we were at the line, there was some Joe Schmo or some Miss Sis or whatever came by and they're like, What's the line for? Who are you standing in line for? Read the sign. Read the sign. And we tell them it's Dr. Frankini, and they're just like, 
Like they look like they like had no idea what the hell that guy is. They're like, uh huh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Every time under my breath, I say, "Get the hell out of here." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah." I meant Daria. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to trigger Rob. Oh, who doesn't, dude? <laughs> Bring the shine. <laughs> oh God, yeah, there was a lot of good things that happened at the month of May. Just <laughs> it goes by too fast, but man, when you, the more you just think about it, the more you just enjoy it. And hopefully, if you guys never gone to the the five hundred before, hopefully, you know this will encourage you guys to go out and hopefully go to it someday. Because guys, I mean, it's like an addiction. Once you start, you can't stop. <laughs> it's 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 amazing. I mean, I can't put any more terms than that. <laughs> Wish I could, but yeah. Well, Luke Skywalker, John Lennon, according to him, said he was bigger than Jesus, which I agree. <laughs> <laughs> In 1966 or 64, I think, he... He goes on camera and he said, you know, the Beatles and the Beatles in the in the UK are more popular than Jesus Christ. <laughs> he actually said that. And many people got pissed off over that. Oh yeah. I'm talking about triggered people back then. I mean, there you go. <laughs> no, I think legendary Larson triggered me more than anything. Rap is good. Oh God. <laughs> I mean, respect the opinions. Oh, I don't care. It's all good. I just prefer to listen to my classic rock, man. I like Bruce Springsteen, like Paul McCartney, Queen. Mm -hmm. Can't go wrong with that. Hell. <laughs> I was raised in the classic rock family, so I was raised to love it. Same. <laughs> no, no, what J. Larson never triggers me. Never does. <laughs> 8,500 is the addictive drug. Well, I mean, if you want to say that, then I guess. <laughs> but don't do drugs. <laughs> Stay in school. <laughs> oh, God. Larson fan, if anybody stole my camera, that, that would just be the end of them. <laughs> <laughs> it, and it would be a missing person's case in Long Pond, Pennsylvania. Let's just say that. <laughs> and you have me going, I don't know where the hell they were. I don't know who this person is. <laughs> oh god he disappeared <laughs> he just walked, just walked down the pit lane and nobody ever saw him again <laughs> all these comments <laughs> gotta love them <laughs> oh my god what what other stupid people did we come across at the speedway this year uh i mean besides carb day and the 500 i mean hell there's there's always idiots hell and i'm just amazed how you know how trash you know carb day and how the track is on carb day and then the next day it's completely like spotless i mean got to give all the uh, employees and all the volunteers who you know clean that place up and just did a day it's crazy I cannot believe how quickly that speedway gets cleaned up after all that crap in the carb day because people on carb day are fucking cows or pigs or farm animals. They are. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, another good thing, I mean, this is kind of getting off top a little bit, but turn three, there you get two types of entertainment. You get to see what's on the track and also what's at the snake pit. <laughs> My God, it, it's it, it's it's an interesting game. <laughs> Let's just say you see a lot of ambulance lights coming out of the end of the speedway. You do. You, you see a lot of uh, you know fun stuff. <laughs> if I if I can keep that as G-rated as I can. <laughs> someone almost pa someone passed out before the race even began this year. Oh yeah, because like okay, like uh, uh, what was they? They like both of them like they were like doing like a. Well, look like a mock sumo rant, uh, 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 match or whatever. <laughs> they had like those little, those little freaking big old floaties on. And they were just, you know, <laughs> wrestling like sumo guys or whatever, and they were just bumping each other off. Well, apparently, one guy bumped the other guy so hard that the, the freaking thing popped, and he just went down on the ground. 
I don't know, face first or ass first, but it he, it was bad. I mean, it, it was really bad. <laughs> What's the worst part about the whole month of May to speedway like carb day? Not carb day like in the garages or photo shooting to practice at the Freedom 100. I'm talking like Pagoda Plaza. That thing becomes a freaking pit after that. It is. It's like a war zone. It's like, huh, get in there while you can. <laughs> I don't like that part of carb day because you're around all the drunks, and I have no tolerance for drunks. You know, like, quite frankly, like I just said an hour ago, whoever invents bug spray that repels human beings is going to be a saint. <laughs> I'm going to get that spray, and I'm going to spray the hell out of anybody that comes within 10 inches away from me on carb day. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, what a beer! <laughs> <laughs> or better, yeah, I'm gonna get electric shock and zap everybody. <laughs> I'll get them going. <laughs> oh, how, don't get me thrown on that on that one time I wanted to tie somebody to a fucking flagpole during a rainstorm. I'm honestly not surprised. Oh my god, this is more kids involved with this. I was a kid with a cracker barrel. And I want to enjoy my freaking meal out of Cracker Barrel. Oh, we appreciate it, Legendary Larson. Glad you had a good time. Hopefully, we'll uh, hopefully we can do this more often <laughs> if we got the time because we're we're busy individuals. <laughs> we are definitely have a good one, man. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm, yeah, at, man. I'm at a Cracker Barrel. I'm trying to eat my breakfast. There's a four year old kid screaming and fucking crying next to me. <laughs> Nonstop during the whole meal. And I almost audibly said to everybody in the restaurant, "I if this kid doesn't shut up, I'm going to tie it to a friggin' flagpole during the snowstorm. I hope it gets struck by lightning. <laughs> I mean, there's only one person in this world that would do the same things that, right, that Rob would do. And that's my sister. She has the same mentality as Rob. Like, <laughs> I can see both of them going on a mask. Spree of just eliminating children. <laughs> Those oof. two are, yeah, big oof. <laughs> it's the stuff they say, man. It's it, it concerns me. <laughs> I, I, I'm there. I, I we're here for you guys. <laughs> don't let us babysit. Oh my god! Don't let oh, us yeah, literally, like my, my sister's really like a, a version of like a female version of Robbie Noonan. God, that sounds like a mouthful, <laughs> but she, she has that mentality. Like every time she, when it's at a Walmart or a restaurant, like God forbid, like I just, as soon as I hear a kid, I immediately turn to her, and there she is, just gave me that look, like I'm gonna do it this time. I'm gonna kill it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna go to jail. She's like, I don't care. It'll be silent. <laughs> Ugh. Oh man, yeah. Oh, thank the Lord, there's not a lot of them in this, in, this, in, the, in the garages this year. Thank God, yeah. And that's why bronze matches are eighteen plus. So that's another good part. <laughs> God. Ugh, holy moly. We don't, we just don't I just don't know it. You know, quite frankly, Brian's sister is a female version of me. She is. We have like very similar personalities. <laughs> and I just have a really dark sense of humor, so don't mind some of the shit I say sometimes. Like sometimes I go, I push boundaries. Like I'm really I have he really does. dark sense of humor. Yep. So I don't know if you should be concerned or entertained there, Cole. Quite frankly, the big guy just appears. That's that's that, that's concerning enough as it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the only reason why I call it three the big guy cast the tears because the three fucking stooges did not get approval from everybody. Clearly Don't not. Worry. We did we didn't got the memo. Well, I think <laughs> I don't know. That apparently was not that was not family appropriate, so we had to tone it down a little bit. Yeah, you know, just, just, a, just a notch, you know, just <laughs> right there. <laughs> oh, and man. Just don't exist anymore, so the three die casketeers can really uh, get a rocking and rolling here. 
No copyright. For real. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll patent that in the patent office. Monster <laughs> Family Guy. Remember that, remember that cut scene from Family Guy, Albert Einstein, the patent office? Bam! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I remember that. <laughs> no, but what, what, what our lives really were every day at the Speedway was a Seinfeld episode. We couldn't find our car any day at the track. Oh, yeah. We were just like, dude, it's like a bright freaking red Nissan um, Sentra. Like, <laughs> God, like with jersey plates on it. Like, it stick out like a sword. No, we're just saying, like, where the hell is it? <laughs> no. I said that this really is a Seinfeld parking garage episode. Thank God I didn't have to pee or else I might be excited for urinating in public like Jerry Seinfeld did. <laughs> I freaking love that episode, man. Such a classic. Well, my, favorite, my favorite episode of all time was the wedding invitations. No! <laughs> you know, don't remind me. He's getting married to his, to his fiance, and she he really can't stand her to a degree, so he was trying to get out of the relationship – Little no, little did he know he bought poison envelopes and he made her lick them. And as she's licking them, you see her eyes roll back and she passes out and dies. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that happened on live TV, people. Back then. That wow. Happened. Yeah. The nineties were awesome. <laughs> man, that's a hell of a way to go, man. If you're gonna die, lick envelopes. <laughs> All right, Lucas, you have yourself a great night, bud. Stop by IndyCar Diecast to buy in 2019. Well, you know. Tiger Fire, of course. That's going to come out for this time in November. Connor yeah, there's a lot of good ones. Not in particular order. Connor Daly. Mm-hmm. Marco Andretti, the 500 car. Bordet. Um, I, 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 mm-hmm. I would say Sebastian Bordet is really oh, nice, too. Oh, I can't forget Bordet. Really. Mm-hmm. Bordet. can't forget that. Or is like one of the top man. That is like the best one to have this year. Finally, we've got the Seal Master car <laughs> after a year <laughs> of requesting. They were going to make it last year, but apparently had to finish in the top three in the standings in order to make it. Well, we got it made now, so no harm, no foul, I guess. <laughs> we're green light fanatics, but. All time, well, all time. Well, Greenlight would be number one with me, but number two, I would say. Oh, all time! Definitely action. Yeah, action was definitely where it's at. I mean, action. I definitely, I do have a soft spot for Winter Circles as well because that was my childhood as well. Same. So, oh my mm-hmm. god! Winter yes. Circles. That's why I love NASCAR Authentics because it just reminds me of that. And it's not in the clamshell either; it's in the card back. True. Yeah. Oh yeah, Winter Circles had clamshell back. That's why I like that too. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the COT era they did. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, this is straight nice. traffic. They made a Jack Harvey car yet. I'm surprised they didn't make an Erickson car. It's basically the same livery as Hinchcliffe's. That's a surprise. I can't believe they didn't make an Erickson car this year. Mm-hmm. Supposedly there's no Pippa Man 164 either. Oh really? Wow. I thought um well what was his uh, name? Uh uh, NASCAR Diecast Brazil on Instagram. I thought he posted something about it. Or... If anything, it's probably an after May release, but I didn't see it at all on the track. Oh, uh, no one knows. Yeah, Jack Harvey knows me all right. He knows me as the photograph guy. No, always comments on them. Oh, Jack Harvey. <laughs> He's a good apparently, mate. Apparently, there's no Pippa 164 this year. Ah, uh, rip. The one time she actually qualifies, and we don't get a diecast made. Yeah, the one she freaking <laughs> right. You're right. Uh, yeah, that's two years in a row. Green lights got that they made two cars that got bumped. Hell, Hinchcliffe and Man, and then Alonzo and Chilton. Oof. You know the whole Alonzo thing. There's a great Associated Press article that lists literally everything they did wrong. Oh, Jennifer Fryer, she. She tore that up. I I, I applaud her for that. that. That was an amazing article. <laughs> the best article she ever written because she wrote literally everything they did wrong. That freaking oh, American easy to oh, be. Oh yeah, look where that lined you up. Yep. Uh, how embarrassing. Oh my god. 
freaking McLaren. Shame they haven't put out a herd I guess yet. Well, yeah. They were supposed to make one last year. That worked out really well. <laughs> oh man, that, that, that that's good. <laughs> Appreciate the all caps too. Hell, really, really got my attention. <laughs> what was your favorite memory of the five hundred this year? Oh gee, who really hard? I mean, God, that that's really hard. Hell. Wow. I honestly don't know. So difficult. <laughs> Maybe it was when this guy crossed the finish line. Oh, who's that? Elio? Oh, it's Pagano. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Elio finally got it done. Four. Woo. Oh, wait. Simon. <laughs> Oldest car you have. Oh, man. All I can say is the oldest car I have is probably before you've been born. Odds are that, depending on how old you are. <laughs> First car I got was, I hate to say the year, 97. 97? Oh, wow. 97. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I'm up there. And that was brand spanking new. FYI. <laughs> I did not get it in 2009, my friends. I got it when it was it just came out. Long time ago. Oh no! Or Gar or Gary here going to play for a few years now. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even alive in '97. <laughs> I was uh, uh, Mr. Forehead. That's me. Uh, when I was about like possibly just about two. So <laughs> a little pips week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jake's only born 94. He's one year younger than me. Well, you were born when that car was made then. <laughs> yes, I'm hyped for Lion Block, uh, Cole. Yes. I'm going to do definitely Saturday. I'm debating I'm doing the Friday because I don't know if I'm taking off Mid Ohio yet or wow, that's working out. It's all going to work out. I don't know what my schedule is like for that race weekend yet. Lime Rock is such a great course because the IMSA race is 2,045 minutes. It's GT only. And it's a, it's a mile and a half track. It's literally a mile and a half road course. So they're lapping like at 40 seconds a lap, which is incredible. Hell. Did you ever click Hot Wheels at all? Yes, I did. We all gave them to the preschoolers, and now they're all destroyed. <laughs> I have probably over 300 or 400 Hot Wheels, to be honest. I'm getting back to the Hot Wheels collecting. I've been very impressed with um, what they've been having lately, especially for all the IMSA fans. They, 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 got, they got a lot of good selections this year. What are the words to original Big Brothers intro? I always need to put captions on that because uh, <laughs> uh, the buddy uh, that that was one of my old friends who was from uh, the UK, um, and yeah, he's got a pretty thick accent. But uh, <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't change that intro though. <laughs> but I think it's supposed to go like you don't need to go to Niagara Falls when you eat some Brian balls. <laughs> <laughs> It was supposed to be a jingle for like a breakfast zero because we just had those random conversations back then. Yeah, I just thought of that. I was like, hey, I'm going to be different. I'm going to put that as my intro. And long behold, it's still here until this day, surprisingly. So <laughs> I remember seeing that intro when I was like 15 or 16 when I watched one of your videos. Mm -hmm. My God, the years have gone by. <laughs> and that, dude, hell, I, God, I, I, did, I still can't believe I did the diecast. I thought I'd be burnt out of it, but. Heck, it's that day. It's just your guys' support. I just appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> we're like the yeah. like free main diecast people on YouTube mm -hmm. now. You know, it's like I don't do it for the popular. I don't do it for the subscribers. I don't do it for the for the for, for the uh, for mm -hmm. the and the fortune. You know, I do it because I love it. Same, yeah. We all have 
passion for you know diecast so i mean diecast collecting is what got me into nascar it's what got me into indycar and same now with hot wheels come out with imsa diecast I, I i'm getting into imsa now too so <laughs> it's uh, the diecast is life man before diecast collecting we met you two guys oh my god my life's never been the same ever since then i have that's why i have my shrink appointments every three months <laughs> <I don't. laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> oh man! But now, but now more to the photography hobby. I got uh, my camera's downstairs. Oh crap! Uh oh. But um, yeah, more into that hobby now. Photography is like more like is like a big thing for me now. Because I met a lot of good friends off of that as well. I mean, really, I mean, I met I met so many good people from that from that universe. Mm -hmm. A lot and of inspirations as well from that. And we're going to get the diet reviews now. Eventually, oh, yeah. eventually is the key word. <laughs> eventually, yeah, just like the special time card. Eventually. <laughs> 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 oh man, childhood. We, we just don't know what the schedule is going to be like because we got so much shit to do. Mm -hmm. yeah, Brian, we got to get. Mm-hmm. One of these days, that I guess news video is gonna be uploaded. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be a long one. So one these, popcorn ready. <laughs> one of these damn days, I'm gonna do. The, I'm gonna start up again with the NASCAR videos. I just gotta get. I, I'm probably gonna get some at Pocono. I'm probably gonna get like a couple because fanatics say friggin' not fanatics anymore. No, that's, that's yeah, yeah. I, you know what you mean? Yeah. Ten dollars for diecast, man. That's crazy. That's uh, that, that's insane. They can get away with that. I think I might too much get for me. To, like not mm. really out at the outside the track yet. But other than that, I'm just waiting to play my sales guys them. Mm. True. Plus we get that slight discount from them, so I love it. And free shipping too, thanks to diecast fans on Twitter. <laughs> yep. I can pick up a Harvick at Pocono. I want to get that Miller at that not. M Miller White. Oh God. Bush. 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 No, I didn't say Mobile One. <laughs> That's how bad that was. <laughs> I'll give you credit. It's only Let's do it again. Time. Screw it. <laughs> now give me a break. I've been staring at a freaking computer screen for like the past ten hours. Oh god. But yeah, mobile one cars I want to pick up that like that ghostly looking car. That that looks that's great. Mm -hmm. But most of the day on Saturday, I'm going to be down in the pitch shooting. So I'm not really got time to die cash shop. I think my die cash shopping will be like more like Sunday morning ish. Then once noon hits, I'll be down pit side again. I'll be shooting the whole race. Hmm. Um, the thing was, the thing is though, like the best photography advice I can give to somebody is when you are behind the camera you cannot be focused on the race you can't be saying oh hunter uh oh hunter race go out good off a two but he's losing in a turn three and four if you're doing that you're not doing your job properly i'm sorry the only thing you got to be focused on is that little screen in front of you get in the car and shot get it focused and get the image of it because if you're not doing that you're not doing your job properly and don't, and that's the best advice I can give somebody because if you're 100% focused on getting it right, you will get it right. And you will be your own biggest critic because I'm my biggest critic. I throw out so many photos. Like people probably think, oh, all my photos are great. No. I would say if I take 2,000 photos of an hour practice session, 200 probably are the only ones that are usable. Right. If I get 10% success rate, I'm going to be doing cartwheels. <laughs> That that'd be interesting. <laughs> that'd be a sight to see. That would just see yeah. some guy with a <laughs> yellow hat, just you know. Oh, he's he's going up and he's going down, going up and down. <laughs> he just sees just a yellow dot on the track, just going up and down. <laughs> oh man. Well, listen. If I do cartwheels, the only thing that leads to is a free trip to the hospital. <laughs> just don't do the splits. That would um. Oof. Thanks. Are you some people? I will say this, though, photo shooting is going to be a lot easier this Sunday than what it was the past couple weeks. 
shooting any cars, my God, these those things are fucking bullets, man. They're half the size of a stock car and they go 50 miles an hour faster. I don't know how in the world I managed to get 400 something photos that came out good. <laughs> stock cars are going to be a breeze compared to that. Well, then again, you know, I can go Saturday and I can have a rough day. You don't know. You get the wrong settings, you're all screwed up. Yep. Yep. That's my up. Well, not every day the track's going to be pretty and uh, not every track of the day is not going to be be easy shooting right there. Um, that's the, that's the best advice they can give. Me, old NASCARs are so much better than new line elves. Well, isn't that the truest fucking thing if somebody said all night? Uh, for real. <laughs> that's the OG comment of the day. That's that was good. Man, NASCAR netcasts were amazing back then. Hell. This is the Elite 160 for us. Oh, Garrett's more than I who collects the older one, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I just do it on a random occasion. I see something. <laughs> Same. I mean, I do it with my drivers or, you know, if I find a seal on or whatever, Facebook or eBay, it's like, hey, send it. <laughs> so. And it's officially midnight. Oh my god, we'll be going on for three hours. Oh god, oh wait. We're still alive. <laughs> Usually about this time uh, when we're on Skype calls, we'd start dozing off and we're just like we just, you know, have our nice moment of silence and then we just we just make weird noises. <laughs> <laughs> totally losing it. And then eventually I I'm AFK on the Skype call either I'm on the shitter, or I'm in the <laughs> eating, or I'm sleeping. One of those three combines. So. Hope it's not the first one. Oh, God, hopefully not. No. <laughs> Trust me, Rob's been in that situation before. It's uh, make sure to mute the mic then. <laughs> yeah, that's why they invented the mute mic as it gets on this, this jackass right here. <laughs> I cannot, I, cannot, I cannot name how many times I've been on a Skype call and I'm sitting there talking, like I'm explaining things. I'm talking about the races and I get no response out of Brian's end and little did I know he's fucking sleeping on me. <laughs> oh, <in> my life. <laughs> that or I'm just eating a snack for who knows. I, I, <laughs> I tend to wander around somewhere. <laughs> okay, so what is the one thing that race announcers do they absolutely hate? You know what the one thing that's driving me crazy this year? Nobody says inside or outside line anymore. They go either it's the top or it's the bottom. Oh, gee, you know, Kyle Larson is good on the top, but he goes to the bottom in turn three. Oh, he's good at the bottom in one and two, but he's going to the bottom in three and four. You know, Kyle Larson is running the top, but he's going right to the bottom to pass this guy. What's your sex position, top or bottom? <laughs> <laughs> That's Robbie Noonan for you, folks. <laughs> yes, sir. If, I had, if I had a dollar for every time Kevin Harvick says top or bottom in a friggin' broadcast, I'd be fucking loaded. <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Don't get me started on how we just make a bunch of loud noises these days, too. <laughs> There's a reason why I have a record player here that plays every NASCAR race, because I want to hear those smucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, Vince Walsh, don't get me started on a tough break for him. Oh, my God. Oh, tough break for Roe Gregson. Tough break for Justin Haley. Oh, oh, for, oh uh, jo jo Johnny Sauter blew up. Tough break for him. Oh, he, oh, he fell off a three-story building. Tough break for him. <laughs> yeah. Where's the check when you need it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, there's a breakup in the grandstands. Tough break for that guy. <laughs> Break. Oh God! <laughs> oh, fucking imbecile! I can't stand him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honestly amazed of how many people you can stand, Rob. Hell. <laughs> the 
Wiss is out the door. Mm hmm. Going right. by the day. Going by the day. Out, outside the door. <laughs> Literally. Excuse me. Now I'm getting started. Oh, for real. Poor Gary is sitting there laughing at all the shit I'm saying. You barely say anything. <laughs> I'm very quiet, honestly. I'm very quiet until I start ranting about uh, why Kyle Bush won this and Kyle Bush won that. I moved in and I'm out, man, so it's all good. What even happened in the 600 that everybody was so pissed off about? Honestly, I was very happy with it. The first stage, I mean, it was a demolition derby. I mean, man, they were just going all over the track, racing extremely hard. The Toyotas, man, wow. They just kept blowing tires out like crazy. Truex actually got in the wall in stage one. Yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> yeah, he literally had a tire go down, and he won the 600. Like, I, I don't even know. You know, there was a lot of controversy about that whole – second stage break that they got going on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have no idea what was going on because in the month of May, if it's outside of the town of Spew, Indiana, I don't know what the hell is going on. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot about that. Yeah, how um, how was the reception for that? Like, I feel like it was very mixed on it. Like, I felt like there was a lot of people that was happy about it. It was patriotic. But, I mean, literally what they did, they just pulled the cars down uh, pit road. They stopped. They had a you know, big old banner slash flag. And, they you know, they paid respect to our mm -hmm. fallen troops and stuff. But... Some people seen it, it was a little too much. Some people didn't. I think it depends what side of the fence you're on. I personally found it as a nice tribute, but I think it's something they shouldn't do every year, maybe every 10 years. I think that would be kind of nice. Quite frankly, Cause this, this was the 60th anniversary. Yeah. True. Well, frankly, this is stuff that be done during the pre-race. That's my personal opinion. I, mm -hmm. I don't really have that big of a problem with it because, you know, my, my grandfather served, Brian's dad served, you know, it's, Great that they did that, but I hope that I just hope it doesn't set precedence. Because mm -hmm. you know how much I hate the stages, enough as is. Same, how, preach. How, yep. Two, there's two words I come up with it: race, manipulation. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what the playoffs are. It's it's just manipulating finishes, and it just feels artificial. Oh God, the p word. The dreadful P word. <laughs> <laughs> Playoff implications after one lap at Daytona. I know they are already talking. They, they were literally talking about the playoffs after a few races in. I was like, "Do you guys have nothing better to do? Like, we're not even a quarter of the way in the season, and you guys were already talking about that freaking p word. Like, get a grip." <laughs> I can't stand the playoffs for for the record. Uh, that's a nice drinking game when you're watching NBC. Oh, the playoffs, playoffs! Uh, I'm drunk already on the first lap. <laughs> <laughs> He passed out on the second stage. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's one way to make the ratings go up. Make everyone drunk so they think the race is good. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lordy. But there was a lot of controversy surrounding some of the tweets that were going on with that, the whole second stage break. And I was like, I don't understand what the hell all the controversy about. I mean, I don't personally, I think that shit should have been done, should have been done pre race, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, true. You know, I agree. Be, of course. But, you know, there's. This is this is some stuff that's like really, you know. Do any do some of these people have lives? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> They're basement. They're not the best to do. Hey, dude, have you ever gotten laid, man? Like really? <laughs> oh man! Like you're fighting with 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 people on Twitter over a stage break, man. God almighty, dude. Garrett, show, us, show us what you got from Indy. Garrett, I did that two hours ago. Where the hell were you? <laughs> <laughs> Not you, Garrett. The other Garrett. I was going to say, there's another Garrett. <laughs> yeah, you go back and watch the video. You'll see all the stuff I got from Indy. Oh, yeah. This is like going to be like a three-hour long video. <laughs> I think it's already over three hours. Maybe we'll hit four. Who knows? Holy, holy moly. <laughs> I have no clue. I've, I've lost need, count at this point. I need to stay up late tonight because tomorrow I'm up early. Whew. So Saturday, I got to be up at like five in the morning to be at the track by seven. Mm -hmm. 
Last day of class tomorrow. Well, good good luck, man. You get the whole summer off. You're lucky. Bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I could take the whole summer off. Same. Dude, I kill for that hell. But then again, you know, races aren't cheap, so. <laughs> Got on that somehow. Just be sponsored by Menards and you can go to any race. Uh, to show with Menards, I'd be like, hey, you know. <laughs> you know Just I'm be Brandon with- Jones. Do nothing and get to go everywhere. I mean, I could probably, if I grow all my beard again, I could pull off me and palm it out again. Because apparently, when, uh, like, literally, last year when I bought this hat, people were like, oh, you look like Paul Menard. And then when I pawned the Truex hat, you look like Colt Hearn. <laughs> How does someone accomplish that? I don't know. And even one person thought I looked like Matt Kenseth, too. And then my friend Derek, uh, he's the one that started it. Um, <laughs> he's like, you look like Suarez. I was like, ole. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but the Cole Pearl one really topped it off. That I, I embraced that. That, that, that was cool. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let's not forget about all the times they made you shave off that beard to get you in for free at Watkins Glen. Oh yes, those memories, those dark memories. Hell, <laughs> baby face, Brian. <laughs> I go from a twenty-one year old or twenty-two year old to back to a nineteen year old just to get a fifteen dollar IMSA ticket and IndyCar ticket. <laughs> Yeah, when IndyCar was in town at Watkins Glen, the, the, the pricing was like $80 for an adult for the weekend, but it was 15 if you were 19 and under. <laughs> so the, the bright genius I was, I said, Brian, I want to get you in for 15 bucks. That beard's got to fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> so I literally made him shave off that beard, and the poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> Looked like a fucking fifteen-year-old, <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> people did not even question. They said that that dude is a teen. He's getting it for fifteen dollars. <laughs> hey, I do. I, yeah, I would too, man. <laughs> I would again, but you know what? I it will look weird. I mean, I'm almost twenty-four now, and trying to pull that off. It's uh, all right, you know. <laughs> Except it out, Brian. You're old. <laughs> I made him shave off that beard, and there was one time where he actually made a comparison photo. He's all shit happy with the beard. <laughs> and then I was all miserable after. It was like a before. Oh, I'm all happy with the beard, and then after, I'm just like, kill me. <laughs> hey, what's up, Rowdy Smoke 14? Oh, I made him do that. I made you do some stupid shit. Corey, you definitely did. Hell, you got a lot of catching up to do, man. <laughs> what else did I make you do? <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't even want to know. <laughs> I mean, that was probably the best right there of what you did. <laughs> Well, all I, all I can tell is if you put Lewis there, I don't even didn't have him shaved. First of all, he doesn't have a beard. It looked like a freaking 13 year old. <laughs> oh, God. They got Derek's not in the chat. He would kill us. He'd be like, ah, squeaky in the forehead. How dare you? <laughs> oh, my God. We we did so much stupid shit, we were, especially walking Squint with, with that ticket system. Mm hmm. <laughs> oh lord Shave off the beard You look like you're like 15 now The freaking Joe and Joe's dad Are just like baby face I'm just like <laughs> <laughs> Remember the time when we went to the Continental experience at Watkins Gwen And uh, Joe's father just wanted To bag the poor soul And the woman kept advertising the freaking tires And he goes no I would just like a bag, please. You make shit tires. I don't want to hear about it. God, it's kind of tires, man. <laughs> you know, right by the technology, I'd be more interested in the bag, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Joe's dad's just straight up, man. He's just, you know, the guy is a Marine. Uh, he, he, he was a, you know, he just, you know, <laughs> knows how to. Get the sense going. 
Oh, man. <laughs> oh, holy crap, man. Whew. Oh, my God. So I think we should end the stream. I think we really have gone much longer than we anticipated, but it was a hell of a lot of fun. It was. I'm glad you guys appreciated it. Hell, we can hopefully try to do this again whenever, like I said, we get the chance. <laughs> Heck, yeah. We'll be on a call probably by the time we get off of this, but we should probably just get off the stream now because I think everybody's going to be way too tired. Same here. Oh, yeah. Probably going to see me getting passed out again. <laughs> well, if you want to, if you want to get visuals of us sleeping in our beds, you know, or especially Brian passed down in his bed. Yeah, I don't want that. Trust me. I mean, want to save your guys' poor souls, so make you guys sleep well, better at night. <laughs> I see these Joe Schmoes it's not just, you know, sleeping, you know, being lazy. <laughs> Thank God Brian's not a snorer. Oh, my God. I would have freaking killed him at, at, at Indianapolis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. My God. Anyways, well, people, peace out. We'll see you in the next videos. Peace out, man. Peace out.